Welcome to the Arlington uh, School Committee. This is our special meeting. Today is Thursday, March 2nd, and we are having a special meeting on the budget. Um, is there any public participation? Okay. Okay, so um, can I have a, yes, Dr. Alice just, Nampy. Just to clarify, it's mm -hmm. the legally mandated budget, public hearing for the budget. Right, right, right. Um, it is actually not the only opportunity for the public to hear about the budget. Um, the Budget Subcommittee is doing a series of community events at PTOs to, um, to talk about the budget process, uh, which I think people have really found very valuable. Um, okay, so can I have a motion to close the special meeting? Move Mr. to adjourn the uh, budget hearing. Mr. Motion by Mr. Second. Hainer, seconded by Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Um, okay, so we are opening the regular school committee meeting. Um, welcome. Uh, we have a, a new art today, so I want to just talk about those. We're going to start over here. Uh, this is the Dallin artwork. Um, students looked at the work of contemporary printmaker Rosemary Farrar and noticed the texture she achieved by carving her print plates. Both foam and soft cut rubber were utilized by students as printing plates to create the detailed and colorful art you see in this exhibit. It's hard to see, but you have to get a chance to look at it up close. It's really pretty cool. Um, uh, over here are parrot paintings by uh, Wilson. Wilson Lau is a contemporary painter in China. He uses oil paint applied thickly with a palette knife to achieve texture. Mm -hmm. Students utilize oil pastels and wax crayons and resist painted over them with temperas to create their textured and colorful paintings of parrots inspired by the contemporary artist. And that is over there. Um, moving to the back wall, um, we have um, uh, Carol Nelson. Students looked at many paintings by Carol Nelson and were especially inspired by her square paintings. We notice how often there is a square broken up by black wiggly lines that resemble cracks and how different sections are often painted in various colors that are subtly blended. Students create their own paintings in tempora inspired by Carol Nelson's square paintings. They try to create a point of interest that would draw the viewer's eye and then keep that interest by guiding the viewer around the painting. The resulting paintings are bold and colorful works that made a statement even from across the room. And that is true, you gotta see these. These are really, really colorful and cool. Um, over here, I'm, I'm sure students were super excited about this. This is a Minecraft inspired pixel art. Students looked at the complex art of two contemporary pixel artists, both from the United Kingdom, before planning out their artwork created with colorful square box, blocks. The app called Minecraft Pocket Edition Lite was used to create these images. Students generate a flat, creative, and peaceful world in which to build and take screenshots of their designs. Some of the finished pieces are accompanied by the student's original plan on graph paper. Some of the plans exhibited here are not completely built in the app yet, but show a strong design and planful thinking. And then over here, uh, drawings inspired by um, Kandinsky, who I have to say is one of my favorite artists. Uh, students read the award-winning children's book, The Noisy Paint Box, by Barbara Rosenstock about the Russian artist Kandinsky as a boy. Kandinsky broke the art worlds of his time by painting abstract art, concentrating on shapes and colors, and his paintings were often inspired by music. Students then created their own colorful drawings of shapes inspired by Kandinsky's works. Very cool. There's lots of really cool, colorful things in here. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the public participation. No public participation. <laughs> uh, next item is um, approval of the Arlington High School trip uh, to Rome, Italy. Um, by Cassandra Mia, um, and just to remind the public, um, if we've had a trip before, we put that in the consent agenda, but if it's a new trip, that we, we have to formally approve that and, and, and hear, hear about the trip. Yes, welcome. Um, uh, oh, could you please come to the microphone up here? Yes, great. Uh, since I began um, at Arlington several years ago, the very first year students started asking me, are we ever going to go to Italy? Are we ever going to go to see Pompeii? Um, our textbook the stories of our textbook take place in the city of Pompeii just before the eruption, and then they continue to move on to Britain, and then they move on finally to Rome. Uh, so the kids have a really wonderful understanding of how the city worked in ancient times, um, and I'm really excited at the opportunity to be able to take them to these places and show them the character houses. Um, one of our main char characters in our textbook is actually based on a real guy, um, and we can actually see his house. Um, and I've, I've spent a lot of time discussing with uh, the company Explorica trying to create the, the perfect trip 
making sure we get to all of the places, um, and I'm hoping that we're able to do that. Cool. Uh, questions and comments? Yes, Mr. Hainer. Have you ever used Macaulay's uh, book, The City? I have, actually. Okay. Yes, it's, it's a wonderful. wonderful book. Yes, uh, yes, it's especially when we're talking about architecture and stuff. It's a fictitious book, but yes. it's... Uh, it, 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 including speed traps on the main road. Yes. <laughs> Other questions, comments? <coughs> nope. um, I just want to say uh, you're my one of my son's favorite teachers. Um, <laughs> so, um, trying to get him to go this trip, I don't know if he's going to, but uh, there's going to be a lot of happening in junior year. But uh, yes, Mr. Hannigan. I move to approve the the trip. Okay, as great. Presented. Um, second by Mr. Schlickman. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank, Thank you very much for coming. Have to fun. Us. Thank yes. you. Thank That's you. Awesome. Okay. So next item on the agenda is the are the monthly financial reports. Um, is that right? Is that yes? That it yes, is. Dr. I would like to introduce more formally to everyone um, Tony Mertz, who has been our consultant and will remain our consultant until we hire a new CFO. Um, she also helped us this, this early this fall. So I'm going to actually let her talk about the monthly reports, but, I, but what we've done in the past is also people can ask some questions, but I, I know you'd like to give some overview of where we stand right now with the FY17. Okay. So with the FY17, what we looked at, um, instead of just doing base projections, we actually looked at actuals for the teacher salaries. I didn't get a chance to look at all the other salaries, but teachers make up the bulk of the salaries. Mm -hmm. And we actually are projecting actuals based on who's here today mm -hmm. and where they're gonna be with whether they get 21 weeks or 26 weeks. Mm -hmm. So we, pe we feel pretty confident that the teacher salary line item should be fairly, it should stay within this number. There are some moving parts with grants and people coming off grants, maybe going on to these numbers that could slightly change but we should be okay with the teacher salaries. Mm -hmm. All the other numbers, again, is making an assumption that they're gonna use 100% of what's in their line items or their budget. Again, that's being, not sure whether or not that happens here or not, but at the end of the day, it looks like we are gonna have a little bit of a shortfall, but wait to see where that sh shortfall lands um, in June. Um, let's uh, take questions, comments about the general stuff first, and then we'll get to specifics. Dr. Alice Ampey. I had specific. I can wait. What? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, but big picture first. Mr. Cardin. So, I mean, we, we can't wait till June, because if we have a deficit, we need to do that. We sure. also are, are discussing, considering whether to tap the Special Education Reserve Fund, which we need to do in April at town, at the, <coughs> the end of April at town meeting. So, mm -hmm. do you, will you have a sense by mid-April of, of how much to request from that? Sure, we should have a better sense of what to request from that um, as I start to get my arms around your full budget and seeing where we're at. Uh, right now we're projecting about a $282,000 shortfall, so maybe 300000 We might have to tap your stabilization fund, which I know needs special, I mean, needs town meeting approval um, to tap that if, if we need to do that. So we would, at a minimum, at least request it. We might not end up using the whole three hundred if things come into our favor. Um, but we definitely would plan on uh, requesting something for sure. Great, thanks. Mr. Hainer. I don't know which one. I, I, the student activity stipends, uh, if I'm reading this right, 81205, there was no budget item, and we're looking at expending $110,000. And when I say I don't know who to address to, I don't know if it goes to the superintendent or uh, since there was nothing in the budget initially for it, and we're expending $110,000. If we don't have an answer tonight, I'd like an answer by the next meeting. Why? Mm -hmm. That's a lot, an awful lot of money to not have budgeted for and to, to be expending. Do you, do you think you can? She had them in a different line item. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I believe she had them in a yeah. different line item. Well, so Johnson had them in a different line item, and now we, they've been moved. Is, we, that, is that our feeling? I, I don't want to cast, yeah. make any comments about anybody. This is what's there. This is what the public is looking at. This is what we're looking at. And if it's, we got to keep things, we got to keep apples and apples and oranges and oranges. Is, is that Thank your you. sense that that's what happened? Do you know? Or is you it something you need to look at, Kathy? Both of you. The, um, well, let's just take a look at it. Okay. Um, okay. 
So hopefully to come back next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Would you be able to join us at our next when meeting? When is our next meeting? Um, the 16th. Next 16th. Of March. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't know if it'll be necessary, but I'm just curious if it, if um, it is. I'll t have to take a look at my okay, calendar. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Good. So Dr. Alice Nampi. Um, following what Mr. Hainer said, um, can we also look at the leadership stipends? A couple uh, items down at 70, minus 76,000. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if it is somewhere else, it's not clear where it is. Um, and the administration stipends, it, it's like all the stipends are somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, and is this, yeah. 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 Dr. It used to be that all the stipends were put into one pool. And I think there was an attempt this year to start pulling them out into categories. So I think we'd have to take a look as to what the pool was in last year's budget. Right. Um, because what you're seeing here is the pullout, and you wouldn't you wouldn't put the FY17 amount in there because it would be you know it would look like it was overinflating what those would be if all of them were together. Right. I just can't see where they are. Else, you know what the yeah, I can't see something that was clearly the pool where they were mm -hmm. pulled out of. Um, and the one other question, I think you sort of may have answered it. Um, I was looking at both the budget tracking that we got for 131.17 and then comparing it to 221.17. And there's a big jump in the clerical salaries and wages. It goes from an overage of <coughs> um, 34,000 to being under by 70, almost 80,000. And I'm wondering if it's because you looked at people and projected things forward as you were saying. So or. again, I'm not sure how it was done in the past. I like to work on actuals. Mm -hmm. So I like to see exactly who's there and project out exactly what they're going to make mm -hmm. as if they're going to be there through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So my projections could be totally different than the way they were done in the past. And maybe that's why you're seeing such a fluctuation. Okay. Um, but again, I don't know how it was done in the past. I can right. only go by what I've done and the okay. way I do my projections. Yeah, but that's, that's what you did for the, yes. the clerical. Okay, so that I bet that's what it was. Thank you. Any other questions and comments? So I just wanted to clarify. So we, um, a couple months ago or a month ago, we were looking at um, about an $800,000 deficit, and now it's significantly um, not quite as bad, right? We're looking at mm -hmm. less than 300000 OK, so that's yes. a significant improvement from, from what we thought we were, position we thought we were in a month ago. Okay. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, right. it's, like, it's like going into the actuals, but I, I will yeah. say that you know one of the sources we had several sources of money we would draw from. One was the um, out the in the tuition in, mm -hmm. and then of course the stabilization. It looks like we probably will only need to go to the stabilization, not the tuition in. Mm -hmm. I think Dr. Alstampi has so, more info. Oh, I well I had one other line item. Oh, okay. Thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please. So. At the bottom of the chart, 87202, training education conferences in attendance. That one's gone $80,000 under. And I'm just, that seems really high. And I'm wondering just what happened. Over budget. Yeah. yeah. So again, it's, it's how I estimate it is, might be, again, different than what how somebody else might have estimated it. But again, I'm looking at what's in the system, what we have for purchase orders that we've already committed. Mm -hmm. So there could have been something that could have been committed, but maybe there's not a purchase order before that I just don't know about. So um, my predecessor could have predicted knowing that there was some stuff that was going to happen in the spring. Mm -hmm. But because there's no purchase order in the system, there's no way for me to know that what's going to be happening in the spring. So there's no way for me to know to project it or account for that expenditure since it's not in the system yet. Dr. Brody, do, do you know if there is there more information we can get on that? that well, does that well? It's the actuals. I, I, the do you know if there's a particular conference <coughs> that would throw up the cost or something that was unexpected? Um, well, I think it's how the money. There's different ways that 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 have that can be uh, looked. The budget can be looked at. Um, Ms. Morris is looking at it through Munis and the purchase orders. But you can also look at it in terms of um, district PD. 
-hmm. and um, the, the, the professional development uh, offerings in any of the schools, and it could just be all lumped together in Munis. Mm -hmm. So it's something we just have to look at. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe we, if we could find out more about that item if possible, just because it, it's 80000 over what it was supposed well, we to be, it. and that right. seems like a lot for that right. particular item. Mr. Hainer. I'm not trying to beat it, but this is an example. The way it's presented, it looks like something that we could have said, mm -hmm. if we're going to go in a deficit, we're not going to continue going with this and save the, and realizing that it would be negative to, to this extent. If it's, and I'm not questioning it, it isn't, but if it's this way, the presentation has to be in a format that doesn't give that impression. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I just have a question about, um, also about snow removal. The, sn the season has not been that bad, and yet we have um, significantly over budget in that. You know, we did have a couple of bad times, but we, you know, in, in total, it hasn't been that bad. We've only had two storms. Yeah, we had two right? storms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, do you know which line item? That oh, is? I'm sorry. It is um, six two four one five. Six two. Where are you? Where are you looking? Where? Are you on the track? Oh, not six. I'm sorry. I, my eyesight's not that good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my readers. Eight two four. Eight two four one four one five five. Right. Yes. Okay, so again, these expenditures of what's hit, hit the ledgers as of 221, so they could pr pretty much be from overtime, is what my guess is. Most of it's probably budgeted from, I mean, expenditures that have hit from overtime um, that have hit that account. We can go through the, all those expenditures to verify that it did, in fact, be three storms. I, I believe there were three snowstorms. Um, so we can take a look at that. Okay. Kathy, is correct me if I'm wrong. The, the whole crew was working the, one time at like two or three o'clock in the morning, prepping oh, the ice they and stuff through, like that. They worked through the night, yeah. which would be all so, time. I mean, okay, so it, mm. so even though there weren't that many, Storm, they hit at bad they, times. They, we had know. a couple of icy days, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. one was yeah. worse than predicting. Yeah. 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 One didn't make the prediction. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, if we have a delayed opening, or uh, we end up opening after clearing over the weekend, uh, we'd have the expense, but it wouldn't be noted as a lost snow day. Right. 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 Anything else? Um, I want to recognize, I, 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 I often forget this at the beginning, but Mr. <laughs> Levy, Jason Levy, is AEA. He's with us here tonight. Thank you. Um, OK, so I think we're moving right now into the budget discussion. So how do we actually, how do, how do we want to handle this? So we have a bunch of things. We had a presentation at our last meeting, mm -hmm. which some of us could make it to and others couldn't. Um, we have, I know the Budget Subcommittee met yesterday and they have some things that they want to present to us. Do we want to give an overview again quickly or? I just had that one question left over that, that question on transportation, $500,000 that wasn't sped. It was in the superintendent's pre, uh, budget and I, I, we agreed that uh, Minuteman has its own transportation. It goes to the town. It's not part of our budget. So were you able to find out what that? Not yet. Okay. Since the last, since the last meeting, we had school vacation. Right. And uh, Ms. Mertz is only here on Thursdays. Right. It was, just for your, it was in the budget book, the superintendent's budget book. There was a line item. I, I apologize. I don't know exactly where, but it said transportation, $500,000 going forward. And it wasn't for special education. And so that's an awful lot of busing or uh, transportation. It wasn't for the Bishop bus that was going to be involving. If it is $500,000, that they must be driving them in Cadillacs then. <laughs> I, I apologize. I, I, I shouldn't be sarcastic. <laughs> but it's still a very high number. I, I accept that we have inter, we have transportation for Bishop. We have transportation expenses right. for special uh, teachers going from building to building, and, and we have people on professional development. But I think if you add it all up, it still doesn't come to five hundred thousand dollars. I think our sped transportation is somewhere around that number. We have Thank you. Sixth grade transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're we're gonna. 
we don't have clarity on that yet, it sounds like. No, we, okay. we can have clarity in next time. So why don't you, Dr. Brody, if you can present um, sort of an overview of what you presented at our last meeting uh, and sort of what the upcoming budget, what are the, I know much of it is, is not different. We don't have a lot of money to add additional programs or, or staff, um, but just sort of the highlights. I'd be happy to do that. Great, um, thanks. In terms of, let, let, give me a quick overview in very round numbers in terms of where we stand with respect to monies for next year. Um, we have an increase uh, from the town appropriations through the formula that we have appropriations. It's three and a half percent on the operating budget, 7% on special education, and then there's the, the enrollment growth factor. If we look at um, the town appropriation for FY18, it is nearly 61 million. It's over 60 million. And that represents those percentages taken to last year's FY17 budget. So if you were simply looking at the increase from town revenues, um, you would look as though you had a 6.6% increase. However, what we know looking at our grants and looking at our, our, our revolving accounts and, and uh, fees, that we're going to have a decrease from last year. Mm -hmm. We know that for sure. We know we have a, a decrease both in Title I and Circuit Breaker. So mm -hmm. the uh, total increase in revenue for FY18 is going to be 5% roughly $3.1 million, $3.2 million. Um, now, of that money, right now, we approximately are going, are, need $2 million of that to meet the contractual obligations uh, of, and the salary increases of all of our staff, district-wide. In addition to that, we have set aside $1 million to meet out of district special education costs. At the moment, we know that we have for sure around 850,000, somewhere between 800 and 850,000 that we know that we would have additional costs next year. Now that number can fluctuate a little bit. Um, in fact, I know that we've had a couple changes in just this last week. Um, but nonetheless, that's roughly where we are. So this million dollars represents anticipated m money. Now, I, I just want to re remind you on how we've budgeted it in past years with respect to out of district. We've usually just budgeted the actuals at that moment in time. Now, it can go up. It rarely goes down, but it does go down sometimes. But it, it's a snapshot at that moment in time what, what our obligations would be. This is a bit of a departure from how we've handled it in the past in that we're anticipating that we might have more um, costs than we currently know for sure. So when you combine those two, you're almost at $3 million. The asks from the department heads and principals if you look at a combination from last year and even the, the ones from this year and you have all that documentation, it's close to $4 million. So what we did um, several weeks ago was take a look at our current FY17 budget, look to see where we could make some reductions in order to, in order to create some revenue for, for additional priorities. So, Essentially, that's, that's what we did. So we had about another 100,000 from the appropriations that we were going to have new for FY18. We made another set of reductions of, of over 700,000 for a total of $836,000 that we could apply toward priorities. The priorities that we've talked about among all of those asks would be um, let's see I have a list here. We're looking to have a director of guidance 
and social emotional learning. We are looking for some part-time assistants, uh, assistant principals for at some elementary schools, and that is really th thinking about as money to support our elementary principals in the form of an assistant principal or perhaps some administrative support of another type. We're looking at an increase in special education learning specialists, part-time, half-time social worker at the high school at Otteson. We also have desktop, desktop support uh, for next year. So these are our, our primary asks with respect to that. Plus we would have uh, reserve positions, two reserve positions that we would, um, the, the fact of the matter is probably they're already spoken for. They're not really quite reserved. We also have in the budget five um, reserve positions for teaching assistants. <clears throat> so that essentially, uh, when you combine all that, is, is roughly uh, coming to the amount. Oh, uh, one other thing, and that is uh, two-point FTEs for the high school. And that will be distributed based on student choices. So it might, for example, it might be point four going to social studies or point two to another department. The, because the, the the sections that we offer is based on student choice, but but that's a, again a pool of money for the high school. So those were the priorities that we have. There, is, as I said, many other ones that that have been listed. So that's essentially where we are right now in terms of these priorities and and the, you know your task tonight and certainly by the time you vote on this budget when it becomes your budget um, is to either affirm these priorities um, or substitute or identify other revenues so we would add something else. So that's where we are right now in terms of the process for this committee. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hainer, is this general or? It's concerning a question. Okay. Yes. Revolving, you said is it more than fees or is it just fees in the revolving accounts? My question goes, why are we anticipating a decrease in fees? Are we people aren't going to be using the facilities and stuff? Well, one is a decrease in circuit breaker. Okay. So is is that the part and that you, you, you we can't predict, and it usually does. Well, no, we know what the we know what the amount is because our our process okay. of budgeting. So, but I mean, you, you're you're showing a decrease in the revolving uh, part, a uh, decrease of about uh, four hundred thousand dollars from 17 to 18. Let me pull that up. Okay. I'm looking at the presentation that you that you gave us today. Mm -hmm. On a, uh, under anticipated yes. revenues for 18. Yeah, the anticipated revenues. There's a there's so, a decrease there of roughly. The, right. And yeah. but I mean, so is that the fees that you're anticipating a decrease in? I'm, I'm just trying to understand. It's, because it's, the, it's all of it. It's broken out in another do okay. document of all of the different. Um, in fact, three. it's on. I okay. think I think Dr. Allison oh, okay. okay. Thank okay. you. It, it's circuit breaker. No. It's, mo it's well, most. She just said that right? circuit well, breaker. We know what it is. Mm. No. So, but, yeah, so but we know it's going down. So it's a circuit breaker. Fine. It's a, it's a decrease it's, okay. in circuit breaker. It's not the fees. Thank you. Yeah. The and I think two million is circuit breaker. Okay. The. The other questions I have, the positions that you talked about, if we approve it, the Director of Guidance and Emotional and the Assistant Principals for the Elementary, those are new positions. So we be, uh, have we got job descriptions yet for it, or will you be presenting those to us? Um, we would have to present those job descriptions to you. The, okay. We've had a Director of Guidance in the past, so it would be really just updating um, that job description. But you, it's a, but it, no, it have to. It would have to come to you. Right. It would be. It would be, and before we actually do the job descriptions, we would need to know that you're. It, you, right. That we approve it, and the assistant principals as well, because we you haven't had them at the elementary level for, mm -hmm. as far as I know, as long as I've been here. So. No. Do we have to wait till the town meeting vote, or before we? No. We don't. Just just no. our once we pass the budget. How so, we go ahead, Rob. Uh, so what we've done in the past once you've approved your budget and the positions are in your approved budget we post anticipated openings and we with the understanding that we don't usually finalize the hires until after town meeting vote mm -hmm. but we want to start advertising right yeah okay great thank you okay. okay so so that's a general presentation i know the budget subcommittee has a presentation as well is that or has a a, a, a 
proposal we have to a us motion. or discussion yes. or motion. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Alice Nampi to. Okay. So we met yesterday. Um, just a sec. I've been pulling up too many things I have to find. Um, we met yesterday and we discussed again the use, the potential use of the circuit breaker and what the impact would be in future years. Um, we decided we were able to get an estimate of what the circuit breaker amount will be um, from Andrea, I don't know her last name. Campbell. Campbell. Um, and she did a very detailed estimate of how much we're going to expect and um, that was very helpful and I had Karen put that in Nova so you can look at it. It's around 2.1 something million um, that's going to be that we expect to collect assuming 70 percent um, payment on the amount that we've been spending this year for FY17. Um, because of that, we felt that there was enough money that we could take um, $300,000 of that, using $300,000 of FY17 circuit breaker and use it in FY18. This starts getting really confusing yeah. because, <laughs> okay, so we, you get paid for circuit breaker in arrears. So right now we're receiving payments for FY16's circuit breaker. Um, and we're going to spend that money in FY18. Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll, we'll get paid for FY17 circuit breaker, and then we expect to spend it in FY19. Right. This year, since we had so much higher expenses in special education out of district costs, we're going to have a higher, correspondingly <coughs> higher collection next year um, and the amount is going to be approximately $400,000 more than FY16's circuit breaker. We felt that we could conservatively spend $300,000 of that and then we would pay it, pay it back to ourselves <coughs> over three years, the following three years by um, essentially paying off $100,000 each year mm -hmm. um, from the circuit breakers. And that's, Lynn did a nice chart and graph. Is, that mm -hmm. is this, you've, this chart is not available in Nova, Novus yet, right? No. I don't. It is now. It is, okay, I didn't see it earlier. She, she just cut it in. Yeah. No, okay, it's not, it's not available. Okay, so yeah. we, we just make sure we put it up there. Yeah, so yeah. Those, those will be put up, um, but. Um, Do we know for the number? Yeah, do you want to sure. talk about the... So, the, I mean, the easiest way to look at it is to assume that uh, our, our special education costs are level from, there, from now on. Mm -hmm. um, they won't be. They bounce around. But right. um, they might go up. They might go down. They might bounce around. Who knows? Okay. But for Three years. looking at it, it's easiest if you keep it level. So, in the, the spreadsheet, <coughs> you'll see that in... Uh, in FY two thousand in two thousand eighteen, that's fiscal year two thousand eighteen. Uh, instead of spending the one point seven million that we are receiving this year, we've bumped it up by three hundred thousand to two hundred to two million. That leaves us at the end of the year with uh, one point eight million in in the budget in the in the fund, rather than the full uh, two point almost two point two million that we're actually going to receive. <coughs> So our normal practice would be to have 2.2 million at the end of the year instead of 1.8 million. So we're taking 300,000 and spending it rather than leaving it in that fund. Mm -hmm. But you'll see that the fund uh, progressively grows. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. It's going to be more at the end of next year than it is at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like we're depleting the fund. It's just not growing as fast as it would otherwise. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, then to to catch up again, what we do in 2019 is instead of spending 2.2 million, we only spend 2.1 2 million. So we're shorting ourselves a little bit each of the following three years. 
The effect of that is seen best on, on the graph, and Paul described it very nicely as smoothing. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're smoothing out. Assumption smoothing, yeah. We're smoothing out the amount we're spending. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of having a de decrease in spending next year, mm -hmm. which, which is unfortunate because we've had an increase in, in right. our costs, um, we're smoothing it out. We'll have a slight increase in spending from, from, special ed, from Circuit Breaker next year and then level off and, and spend slightly lower in 2019 through 21 as a result. Mm -hmm. The reason why, again, this is, you know, you can see the, the, on the graph, the red line mirrors the blue line, but it's, it's two years apart. Um, and that's because of the way both the state does circuit breaker by paying a year, year in arrears, and we've budgeted for a circuit breaker by waiting a whole nother year to spend it. Mm -hmm. so, um, so basically, we're catching up a little bit with our spending, not completely mirroring it, but we're catching up a little bit and then leveling out. Now, the other two spreadsheets show, just very briefly, what would happen if our, our, our out-of-district costs continue to go up. Mm -hmm. But we, we continue to, to be behind, and it's not, we're, no, we're really not any worse off by spending the 300000 It's just that we will continue to be behind and we can, will continue to face the issue. Do we continue to take more or do we continue to fall behind? And that's, that's sort of a, another discussion for another year mm -hmm. if they continue to, to skyrocket. If they go down, um, then we have a nice problem. We can decide whether to pay ourselves back faster mm -hmm. uh, or uh, <coughs> continue it out for three years and, and we'll have basically extra money mm -hmm. to spend. Mm -hmm. So um, all in all, Given, given the nature of the cuts that the administration found to, to try to fund things and the stuff that's mm -hmm. unfunded, I mean, it's only $300,000. It's not right. going to solve all our problems. It's not going to, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to buy us a whole lot. But given the, the dire needs, um, you know, the three of us felt as a subcommittee that this, you know, this smoothing effect would, mm -hmm. was something that we would recommend to the full committee. Does the budget subcommittee have a recommendation as to how that money is spent is that we asked we discussed this with the um, superintendent yesterday mm -hmm. and she felt that she would like to talk with her staff mm -hmm. and get input from her advisory okay. council but we could fairly quickly come up with really high priority items that would mm -hmm. take care of 300,000 sure I mean including, yeah, yeah a dean <laughs> Res more reserve positions, mm -hmm. more TAs. Mm -hmm. I mean, these these were things that we were talking with right. the superintendent, but but and um, some other positions. And mm -hmm. but we, she wanted additional time to to uh, think about it and come back to us. Could I have a clever so, clarification, yeah. please? I thought this there. money was being used to cover a deficit, not to buy new things. Um, well, we have to cover the deficit mm -hmm. either way. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, we're doing, no, but we're doing, I, we're I, doing what the I hear that, but, but I, I just heard the question, it's what are we going to do with the money? Are we, how are we going to spend this money? I thought this well, it is until the budget. next year. It is. We're adding it's to next year. Yeah, yeah. It's 300,000 <coughs> we're adding to next year. Because okay. we can either cover the All deficit right. by not spending any money, or we can okay. partially well, cover well, the deficit. Something to do with the deficit this next year's No, no, but the next year's budget, we can cover that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. So, so um, is there a formal motion yes, on the table? Yes, that's in Novus. Um, okay, so do you want to read the, it out, please? Sure. Great. And I'm making an administrative change because we wrote the wrong um, one of the wrong dates in. So, Karen, I'll I'll fix it with you. Um, the budget subcommittee recommends to the full committee that in order to address the spike in out of district spending that occurred in 2017, three hundred thousand dollars from the FY seventeen FY 2017 circuit breaker funding be included in revenues to be spent in FY 18 with that amount being paid back by spending $100,000 less than the normal amount of circuit breaker each year from FY 19 through FY 2021. Second for okay. purposes of discussion. Okay, seconded by Mr. Hainer. Okay, um, let's open the discussion. Uh, Mr. Schlickman. Yeah, the important point here is that at the same, because we're the, the circuit breaker lags a year in being delivered to us, and then we wait another year to spend it. <coughs> so the, the circuit breaker that we will have available to us next year is from a low 
right. sped year. Right. And now we're having two high sped years in, in, in a row. Mm -hmm. So in order to cover the, the increase in special ed costs next year, we'd either have to take money away from other services mm -hmm. and move it over to the special ed account to account for the increase in out of district expenditures. Much of this is going to be reimbursed the following year. Or what we can do is we can sort of smooth the curve a little. So that instead of funding a very high year next year, after a high year this year, on a low circuit breaker number from two years ago, we spend a little more <coughs> from the circuit breaker next year and spend a little less the following three years, which instead of going like this, we, we, it just sort of smooths out. So we're not really projecting ourselves to be in a, in, in a different position three years out than we are right now in terms of withholding a year of spe a circuit breaker uh, as, as a reserve, but it, it, it just smooths the conflict between the revenue that we were planning on spending next year, which is down, and the expenditures that we have to meet in terms of a higher out of district special aid cost, which are up. So as a result of this, as a result of funding that $300,000 of special ed cost at a circuit breaker, rather than taking money out of the regular, uh, regular ed budget, we can then go and say, okay, we now have $300,000 more to spend in the regular education program, um, and, and I think that that's a reasonable thing to do. Uh, I think it's also a very reasonable thing. I mean, we all had in our head things that we thought we should be doing with it. Uh, reserve positions is sort of an important thing because I'm very nervous and the superintendent is as well about the lack of reserve positions in a district with a rapidly increasing enrollment. Uh, but uh, I think it's unfair for us to go to the superintendent if we vote this motion tonight and expect her to have a spending plan right. for $300,000. Right. So we decided in the uh, budget subcommittee Okay, uh, we'll see if we get this vote, and if this is approved, uh, ask the superintendent to come back in two weeks with a recommenda recommendation for uh, what to do with the 300000 and, and so, just to clarify, the recommendation would come back to us before we voted on the budget. Is that, is that their understanding? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. We if, if this were approved tonight, mm -hmm. then the superintendent would come back to us for a recommendation before we vote on the final budget, which is happening in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. That we could even have it come to budget subcommittee first so mm -hmm. that we could discuss a little bit sure. in advance of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Hainer. The, first off, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the budget committee for the time and the effort that they put in. I really I sincerely appreciate it, even though I'm going to oppose it. Uh, saying that, I'd like you to uh, take a look at the circuit breaker reimbursement chart that was first put up there. The figure that you used was the 70%. Uh, that has been decreasing. Uh, I just chucked in 68%. That's a $40,000 uh, more decrease. If this was a year from now, and I'm not trying to get into politics or anything, but the federal government may not be giving us money, giving the state money. Circuit breaker is discretionary on part of the legislature. And I am, a year from now, we'd know how this legislature, the federal government's going to treat the states and the state, how they're going to treat us. I think I could be, I could swallow this a little bit better. But I am very, very fearful that with this president, with the state, and trying to juggle, uh, take actual money from the state and cover the things that may or may not be there, this is, we're gambling. Uh, uh, the probability is high that we will be successful, but I'm very, very nervous of this, and so I'm going to oppose this motion. Uh, Mr. Thielen. So uh, the question I have is, uh, are we uh, we're going to, if, if this passes tonight, the superintendent comes back and says, this is how I'm going to spend the $300,000, but the school committee is not directing the, su the superintendent to spend $300,000 on X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Not at this, this time. Right. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. okay, so. Mm -hmm. she's, she's going to make a proposal. <clears throat> Yeah, she's going to make a proposal. Um, okay, fair enough. I mean, we, we just to look at the history here, we, we do pass budgets and we talk about different positions and then sometimes over the course of the summer, uh, reality sets in and we, we hire other people than mm -hmm. we say, which is I think everyone needs to be aware that, that yeah. that's mm -hmm. going to happen, right? So everyone's aware. Okay. What, do you have an opinion on this? 
I do, and I'd also like Ms. Mertz to talk okay. to it as well. Because uh, I would love to hear your thoughts, if I could, while I have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> while I have the floor. All right, go ahead. You, you first. No okay. Way. Again, we are projecting that that's what we're going to get for a reimbursement. It's not an actual number. So we're gambling on exactly 2.1 coming in, and it may not. So it may come in at 1.9, because not every expense that we're going to submit could be reimbursable to us. So again, we're using a projection um, that could not come to fruition. So again, being fiscally responsible, I think we should <clears throat> wait and have, make sure that that's what you're going to get and based on past practice, have that full one year reserve because if it doesn't come to that, now you've created a deficit because you're using it for operations that might not be there year after year and then how are you going to fill that gap if you can't pay it back without having cuts? So that's how I, I see it. But again, it's a. I've been. Can I? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been uh, on record saying, and I, the, the budget subcommittee knows how I feel about it. First of all, I will say I really appreciate the thought behind this because we we aren't getting all we need. But I feel very uncomfortable. Um, for the same reason Ms. Mertz had talked about in using Circuit Breaker. What my suggestion had been and is to really just do the budget differently and do it to actuals right now. And I think we would come up with about 150000 possibly that would be there. It's embedded in that million dollars and use that money. Or even if, if, if everybody's still insisting on using Circuit Breaker, at least bring that down. because. We, we hopefully we're going to end this year a little bit better than we thought because if we still keep the uh, the uh, one of our revolving accounts, um, we we have some a little bit of cushion there. It's 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 the, always the uncertainty of special education, and as I said the last time, I'm also concerned about sustainability. If you put this money into general education operating, I fully understand that. By having these increased costs, we do take away from general education. But we have a whole system we have to look at in terms of trying to be really um, sure that the people we hire, we're going to be able to continue hiring. Uh, and that's another commitment we, we try to make to the, our staff that we, unless it's clearly a one year position. So, sub the floor, right? Yes, yes, Mr. Gillen. Thank, thank you, because yes. you got to clarify that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, um, uh, Dr. Bodhi is saying there could be 150. Do you, um, I mean, we're talking about less than one half of one percent of the budget, but uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, do you do you have any reaction to that? Any courtesy or yeah, Lynn? Okay, uh, Mr. Carton. <clears throat> Thanks. So it, it it doesn't matter a great deal where that comes from. If next year we find that 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 special education, we don't need that 150 in special education, we don't have to spend this circuit breaker money. We're just budgeting for it. We're just planning. We're just saying we need to increase the budget by 300000 If that ends up coming out of lower spending in special education or lower spending on curriculum, we added 250000 in curriculum materials last year, which we're rolling over. So if you are uncomfortable next year spending money until we're certain about it, then don't, don't make the curriculum commitments. Do something else. But we're saying that, that for, for budgeting purposes, we need to plan, plan on spending $300,000 more because of this special education spike that we've had. Mm -hmm. it's in your budget, special education is pulling away from regular education. Mm -hmm. It is. And we need that corrected. So how mm -hmm. it's done, my, this is my opinion, how it's done, I don't care. We're suggesting one way to do it because of the, of the very, very, very conservative budgeting stru stru uh, structure that we have with Circuit Breaker. Not all towns have it, many don't. So uh, again, either way you do it, I don't care, but I, I want to see $300,000 more spending come to the table. Uh, I just have a clarificatory question. Um, is the Budget Subcommittee recommending um, any change to the million dollar increase in um, special education expenses, no. uh, which has a little cushion in it? Right. Okay. That, and yeah. that, that's part of my point is that Yes, we're doing this. Yes, there's a risk, but we're also we're not bringing everything else down. As Mr. Cardin says, we've already got 250 for curriculum. We've got 200 or 150 to 200 for additional special ed, which is not an actual yet. 
we feel this is you know, in the light of that either of you know if if either of those preferably the special ed mm -hmm. spending didn't become actuals we don't have to dip into circuit breaker anymore um, but this is a point where we can identify monies which mm -hmm. with a not perfect but reasonable degree of certainty are going to be coming to us um, and we can see them coming going forward and and yes it's possible that everything's going to go totally haywire because of the the administration that we're living with now but we can't budget so conservatively that we're hurting our students and we feel it's a reasonable risk. Okay, I just want to clarify one thing that uh, Mr. Cardin said. Dr. Cardin, right? You got a JD. I'd call you Dr. No, no, I mean, uh, so the, uh, uh, you, we want $300,000 more in the budget, and you said Dr. Bodie might not spend it all. Is that, Dwight? Is that, no. Is, is that, you, you're expecting it, you're expecting it all be spent, yeah. Mm -hmm. She has, it, there's, there's a plan to spend every, every dollar that's in the budget. Right. But there might be savings. We're going to plan to spend the additional 300000 But we know there's lots of places okay. where, where spending might not occur. There's also okay. lots of places, like the heating system at, Aud yeah. at Audison, mm. that's, that might come next year that we have to spend on. So okay. that's, a budget is always based on estimates. Yeah. I just want to clarify. I just want to understand your comments. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, mean I, th I think there's enough back and forth here. I, I think, you know, we got one fifty three hundred. I'm going to support the budget subcommittees. Uh, proposal mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's been good work done and lots of good discussion and uh, there's enough good management of the budget over the course of the year that I don't think we're going to get into a deficit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Slickman. I, I, I want to say two things. First of all, the chart and the explanation that's before you was done by Mr. Cardin and I thought he did a masterful job of it. I thought it was an mm -hmm. excellent presentation. Mm -hmm comes with tremendous clarity and it, it really does a good job of explaining what's happening. But on the other end, I, I want to address the fact that, w you know, that we're at risk in, we're not really, because right now we're receiving money, uh, we're, we're making the expenditures for the money we're going to receive in two years, and this is a high year. The budget has already been submitted for fiscal 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the state, the, the governor's numbers have come in. Uh, we don't know what districts will claim. We also don't know what the legislature is going to do with the governor's budget. But historically, the, the legislature has added circuit breaker money to the governor's budget after the governor has presented it. So we now have a situation. We've got a, a track record in history of how the governor looks at circuit breaker. We have a long-standing history of what the legislature does with the governor's recommendation. Right now we're looking at a fiscal situation of the state where revenues are increasing. Um, uh, while there are other expenditures that are increasing, uh, the projection right now is that we're not going to have a train wreck of the economy in, in, over the course of the next year. Now everything might crash, who knows? Mm -hmm. But that's why we're putting the circuit breaker in, a, in reserve long term. And, and we're, we have a very constructive plan to go and put the $100,000 into reserve from the following three years to get us back to the point we're at right now. This isn't about being aggressive or more risky with the circuit breaker. We're being very conservative with it, but it really is a smoothing operation. We have expenses going up in a year where two years ago the, uh, the, the special aid costs were down and thus the circuit breaker is going to be down. So it's like filling a pothole. And we know that, that, that in three years it will glide out. And if our costs go up, it will trend up. If our costs go down, we'll have more money to deal with. It's not very risky. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that filling this $300,000 hole in the budget uh, is a bigger priority than holding $300,000 in reserve based on the fluctuation of the years in, in receipts. Um, so, uh, yeah, Ms. Starks. Um, so again, my issue is that I don't know what we're spending it on. 
Um, I, as I said before, I, I, if we know what we think we would spend it on, it would help significantly in understanding whether or not we should do this. Okay. So um, I would rather consider this a first read and vote on it next time because I think it needs to come with here's what we would spend the $300,000 on, not just we'd like to, we'd like $300,000 more in the budget and we have no idea what we're gonna do with it. So uh, people help me what I do procedurally, is that an, that's an additional motion to, I don't know, I, to so wait? You just, uh, yeah. uh, what's the well, it's a request call? by it's a request to, to, to it's withdraw, a, withdraw the well, It's or, a, a, amended, a request to amend. No. Or delay it. Or delay, delay it. Delay it. Delay, delay it. Delay it. Delay it. Delay it. Delay it. Okay. Dr. Allison MP. Can I ask, Dr. Buddy, what would be more helpful to you for us to pass or not pass the motion now so that you know what <coughs> to happen or to wait until next meeting? From my point of view, it wouldn't matter. Um, you've committed, you'd be committing the 300000 but for from Ms. Starks or anybody else, they'd want to know what would be the priorities. And actually, I would ask you this evening, so I can take this back to administrators and teachers as well, mm -hmm. that um, you know these are some things that the school committee has some has expressed some preference in terms of additional priority spendings. So, so I can give you one right now. Yeah. So I, um, so I just want to say. Uh, I think that thinking of this in terms of consumption smoothing is really helpful because um, that's something that households and individuals do and I think that that's a helpful way to look at it and I appreciate that uh, clarification. Um, I can tell you that um, my worry about the budget as of now is how much we've cut with the restructuring the TA positions mm -hmm. and the, um, the, re right. the um, uh, mm -hmm. what's it called? The, uh, uh, um, substitute teachers, the, the building subs. Themselves. Which mm -hmm. are not the same kind of a commitment as, as a regular teacher, so that those are things that go up and down each year. So I think if we were to add that to this year's budget and we had to make a cut of those positions, that would be something that would be mm -hmm. um, possible. So, so that's what I worry about in this budget. Um, of course, we have to wait to hear your recommendation um, and the curriculum leader's recommendations. Um, but from my perspective, that's what I think we need to add back. Um, to this year's, to this budget. Um, and I, I have to say, I am uh, inclined to vote for this, so I, I think just counting is it's likely to, to pass, um, just to give you some feedback mm -hmm. of where, mm -hmm. where the committee is going. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hainer. I, since day one, have supported the idea of the, the aides, especially at the primary level of kindergarten, because I value those. I think that's where you write the diagnosis for the, the create the prescription for the next 12 years. And uh, I think that can cut, save money in the long run for special ed and remediating issues right at the beginning. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you asked us possibly to, yes. for, for us. Uh, I think hearing what Mr. Cardin said and uh, going on, knowing, getting an idea of where you're going. You always, the superintendent always has a lot of latitude during the year and things come up all the things that you say we're going to use it for, it's not, all it takes is an elevator to break. And uh, we're looking at the whole Elevator's system not differently. not breaking again. <laughs> we only got but, one. But, well, <laughs> half of one. But anyway, uh, I would be, have a tendency, and I'm not trying to persuade you one way or the other, to vote for this if, if we have an idea and the possibility of it not being used and protecting it for things like that. I, I, I'm glad I, I heard that tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Buddy. Last night we did have a little discussion on, and, and I and I and I truly do want to hear the the thoughts of of other administrators, and I'm sure um, Mr. Levy will give you some feedback from teachers. But I do think that if I, if I was to say, I I, I I totally agree with you that we we don't have enough in reserve for teaching assistants and the building subs at the middle and high school, um, you know. The, and we don't have enough reserve positions. It's sort of a misnomer to say that we have reserve positions right now because truly they are ad almost identified unless something drastic changes in our enrollment projections. 
So having some more ability there, another place where we need some additional FTEs most likely would be the high school. Um, because w the original, which was pared down to start with, was 2.7 FTEs, and we we're down to 2.0. So it, 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 that will have its own rollout as we see where student selections go. But it's, it's those kinds of things. And I think there'll be a little piece in the elementary to free up, you know, for specialists to free up the schedule. So it's going to be in parts like that. <coughs> Th those are the, the things we nibbled away at in order to get the numbers down. And, and I don't disagree mm -hmm. that, um, you mentioned the, the curriculum materials. There is about a little over 200,000 and these, this is not really, I mean it's discretionary <coughs> yes, but not really because of the rollout of the science curriculum and the math curriculum. It's, we've, we've had a multi-year plan for this and it's, it's to keep that, that rollout going. I understand, right? Yeah, well, there's, we always look for online parts of it, too. But it's, it's the rollout of the, the, those curriculums that we've been doing. We, we, we often do that. We just don't do it completely at one time for a number of reasons. One is financial, but two, when you, when you roll out a curriculum, you have to provide enough professional development for that to be successful, and you can't do it all at one time yeah. at any grade level. So those are the thoughts right now as to where we, where we, where I would be leaning toward, and I and I will certainly get everybody else's thoughts on this. Sorry, Dr. Allison Abbey. Oh, I was going to ask Mr. Th Schlickman if he could speak to the having adding an additional dean that you spoke to yesterday. Um, I, 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 my strategy would be add an additional dean this year because what we're, you know. We, Next year we would not be in a position to do it because the focus is going to be on adding uh, staffing for the split of the Gibbs Odyssey. And we're going to need to make significant additions just to <coughs> match our infrastructure. Um, subsequently we're going to be running into years in which uh, we're going to have this site uh, under under construction, we're a couple of years out from uh, a major construction project, which is going to put immense strain on the administration of the building. Uh, if we're not in a position to add a dean next year, two years from now might be too late. So that if this is something we're planning on doing in this cycle, I would say it, it, it's worth considering. Now, obviously, that's my opinion. I expressed the opinion of the superintendent budget subcommittee and. Uh, it, it's for them to think strategically of how they're going to meet that need, but I see this as a huge need that's going to be increasing as we get closer to um, rebuilding this, the, this high school, and that's getting closer and closer, and I think this is the year, the year that we should be doing it, my opinion. Um, other members want to talk about their sort of budget priorities? Dr. Osnampi? Um, I spoke to this last night. I'm concerned about the kindergarten TAs mm -hmm. and whether we can, uh, I understand we want it to be equitable, but we can be equitable and raise the amount for everyone potentially. Um, and also I'm concerned about reserve teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we have enough. Yeah. yeah. So I have to say, I, I, I'm not convinced yet that the dean is as necessary. I, I understand that there's a plan to relieve the current deans some of the workload that they have, and so that I, I guess there's a possibility that that plan would alleviate the need that we have right now, and thus you know, then we wouldn't necessitate the, the addition of an extra dean. So I just, um, obviously, a lot of people know a lot more about this than me, but <coughs> I've heard varied <coughs> positions on this, on the need. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thielen. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we heard principals advocate for what they felt was best. We heard teachers advocate for what, what they felt was best. I'm not in the high school running it every day, so I don't know if a dean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a hard judgment to make uh, based because I'm not there running the thing every day. So I would, I would you know, I always kind of want to hear what the people running the district want and think is important and uh, high priority based on the needs of the district. I do think, you know, one big thing happening next year, a major goal for the year is going to be uh, the successful, uh, you know, the preparation of the, uh, the new uh, the Gibbs 
uh, sixth grade. And so I would, I would just want to make sure that we have all the resources and all of the support needed to make mm -hmm. that happen because that's probably the biggest change. Well, that's the biggest change that's happened in this district uh, in the 15 years I've been on the committee, we're creating a new school of uh, sixth graders in one place, and I just want to make sure there's enough support to make that happen well and smoothly. So, um, but that's a high level look at things. And again, I'm not in the, I'm not in the, I'm not running this high school, so I don't know, I can't really make a judgment if the dean's the best thing. Matt said it was, I take him at his word, but I'm not in an everyday run of the place. Uh, Mr. Slickman. Yeah, I think the one thing that impresses me about the, the, the high school dean uh, and the administrative support we were asked for is the teachers who are asking for it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's unusual enough that when the teachers show up to say we need more administrative support in the building, uh, it doesn't happen very often, and when it does happen, it's something they take very seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to tell a little story. When I, uh, so, you know, I ran a school mm -hmm. for many years, and uh, <clears throat> so people kept saying we need more, 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 more administrative support, mm -hmm. more administrative support. Then I found someone really good. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? That one guy you got is really good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need two. So I don't know. I don't, and I'm, that's not, it's it, not it, at not all. You're not implying that anybody is. I'm not at all disparaging <laughs> yeah. the talent on the building. I just don't, I just am saying I'm not in the place and I can't make a good recommendation. Mm -hmm. well, you know, yeah. That's why we said, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, was, it was a budget subcommittee meeting. What are we going to do with the money? Uh, I think the best thing to do is to send the superintendent off to yeah. uh, talk to the people in the district who are actually have to to live with this, yeah. and then listen to what they're telling us back again. I I was issuing my opinion. Yeah. Uh, that that's it. But I think that the two things that you know that resonated for me in terms of priorities were reserve teachers and the high school dean. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. Through the chair, I'd ask Dr. Bodie, is there any problem postponing the vote for two weeks? In your mind? No, I think no, I, said do, no. I will do the work yeah. and, and, and oh, send it to you ahead so, of time. So that's an amendment to the proposal, is it a friendly amendment? No, it's no. a withdrawal. A withdrawal, oh, we're, we're withdrawing would, it. We would, oh, I mean, so we Bill would, is asking that Kersey withdraw the motion. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, well, okay. Either that or just postpone or, the vote. Yeah, Ms. Starks. Well, I kind of would like to just get it done. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just get it I think, I mean, if, and if it gets voted down, then it gets voted down, mm -hmm. but I feel like we've had a lot, we've, we've gone been back and forth tinkering a with it for yep. a while, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of discussion mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. um, so I would prefer not to withdraw the motion, mm -hmm. and you'll have to figure out what to do. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, so let's vote on it, and um, if people want to vote no, because they just aren't, don't have enough information, they feel they can't affirmatively vote, or if they want to abstain, um, that's at the discretion of the committee. Okay. Um, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 And I'm an aye. Opposed? Mr. Hainer, there's no abstentions, that's it? Okay, so it is. Voted. No, you voted, she voted no. She voted yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, so it's, I voted it's, no. Six it's six one. to one, right? No, we need okay. the money. I just want to know where oh, it's going to yeah. go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so then, um, so I think that concludes um, uh, this budget discussion. <laughs> Uh, we will be voting on the budget at, and we'll be hearing the proposal at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, mm -hmm. yes, so I I think there were other quest budget questions like line items and stuff. Yeah, that we still will need we, answers. Right. Um, will we hear about those by email or, or how will we get okay. the additional questions Dr. answered? Dr. Buddy, what do, what do you think? Um, well, we'll work on these and get and try to get these answers to you maybe toward the end of next week um, when you have a chance to next Thursday take a look at some of them. So many of these were questions that were asked in our last budget yes. meeting on camera. So ideally, we should get right. Is that no? Or these were these were ones that the, the members sent to Ms. Johnson. They, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. These these are more line specific. Yeah. Items just detailed that, questions. Yeah. Okay. Just detailed um, things. Do. Uh, Dr. Buddy, do you want a reminder of what the questions are? Or do you have the I, list I have and you know them. exactly what they are? Okay. So Unless there's, I, 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 have, to, I have your questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't know if anyone else had questions. That uh, yeah, I, I think most of mine were answered. Um, I had to go back and look at my list. Okay. Yeah. Just you were, when you first started your response, you were referring to the ones we were asked tonight on, on the budget presentation Ms. Burtz presented. Am I correct? The I, line. I have those written yeah, right. down. We have those that's, written down. Those are separate from. So we have, those are the additional it. questions. These are the additional. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'd say if anyone has additional questions, I mean, 
now is the time to get him in because if we wait too long, mm -hmm. it's really unfair, right? right. So I think mm -hmm. you feel there's, there's only so much time. There's only so much have. time. So so if anybody after reviewing stuff has additional questions, ideally tomorrow. That's on. Yeah. Okay. No pressure. No, I mean we've had some time to look at it, and we've all we've all had time to, to um, present questions. So if there's any additions, before eight a.m. Um, ideally 8 tomorrow. tomorrow you'll get <laughs> Midnight tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, let's move on um, to the superintendent report. <laughs> All right. Um, well, the first thing on, the, on this is the update on the school building projects. And let me just go down the list. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. Yes. yes. Uh, well, today, um, talking about Gibbs, uh, we had a meeting today. Ms. Starks was the representative to the Gibbs Advisory Committee. Uh, talking with our architects about the des really the, the design of the building, N not the floor plan of the building, but what you know what the floors are going to look like, the color schemes, and we had a lot of great discussion. And, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but I think we'll we'll get there. It was, it was a good discussion. We have a big committee, yeah, which makes it challenging. We have a big group, mm -hmm. but that's okay. The for Thompson. Thank you, Ms. Mertz. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For Thompson, it looks like the steel will be here next week. That's the that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if the steel is here, I think we're going to be able to stay on a schedule. It's going to mean some Saturdays, and the commitment I, I've made and the contractor have made is that when we need a Saturday, we will let the, the neighbors know, mm -hmm. and we have done that, you know, sending notices to each mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, the Arlington Arlington High School. We're going to have a meeting next week um, on Tuesday prior to the Permanent Town Building Committee meeting uh, for the, first, first of all, an overview of where we are, but th there's two major topics. One is the next phase of this project is to get the owner's project manager. And there is a, uh, a process that we have to go through. Uh, part, some of the committee will be on that subcommittee. Then there will be another subcommittee uh, for beginning the communication plan. I think it's important we go through a project of this magnitude that we have um, a very user-friendly way that we communicate with the public about what's going on. And so that, that'll be a committee. The, the, the committee itself will, as a whole, will probably not meet that frequently until we, you know, at least we get through the owner's project um, stage. But that is a very important very, very important part of the project because the owner's project manager is the one that represents the interests of the town and it really helps push the project along, keeps track of the budget very carefully. So um, the time given to that is really important. Mm -hmm. um, Hardy, we are, uh, that proposal will go, to, there is a warrant mm -hmm. um, for the town meeting to talk about that. And uh, we have, at, after, Having had a peer review, I think that we are satisfied that the amount of money that has been budgeted by capital will be sufficient for what we need. So I think we're in good shape there. And, and Stratton is moving along great, perfectly on schedule uh, for, for opening in September. And, and I'm hoping that maybe as we get to a point um, sometime this spring, I'm sure this whole committee wants to maybe take a, a walk through. That'd be great. We'll, we'll work on that. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing in March is by the end of March, completing um, sort of an overview of all of where we are on all the different district goals. <coughs> Many of them you've you've been hearing about. In fact, you're hearing about some of our district goals, and they do the, the building updates every every week. But one of the goals that we have, and we gave a brief, uh, uh, Ms. Elmer gave a brief overview of it last time, is the goal is goal 1-4, which is a, is a planning year to look at um, a social emotional learning in our school, the, the cultures, and, um, and possibly even curriculum as we go forward. And we have more, up, more of an update on that tonight, and I'd like Ms. Elmer, if you, if you would, to just give a, an overview of that. Sure. So I mentioned last time that um, we have nine schools participating um, 
in the Safe and Supportive Schools self-assessment, and we're working with um, consultants from the Aspet Valley Collaborative. The two consultants who are working with us also work at the on the state um, task force for developing the self-assessment, so they really know the tool very well and, and know what the design um, was intended to elicit. Um, and so. We have groups meeting between now and June so that they'll have complete action plans by the end of June um, going forward. Um, but the design right now is five, five meetings um, for each of the groups. Uh, th we've completed the first round uh, over the last three weeks before vacation and now this week uh, where we're beginning by using a cultural proficiency model um, to kind of lay the groundwork for the self-assessment and exploring individual and collective beliefs and attitudes about students, behaviors and families and, and how that um, looks at, you know, exploring implicit bias and um, some of those things that kind of lay the groundwork for how we're going to move forward in creating safe and supportive schools because we can't really do it until we look internally. Uh, and so the first two sessions are really focused around um, exploring that cultural proficiency model. And then we'll move into the self-assessment, um, which is a tool created by the state. It's pretty lengthy tool, so that's going to be a considerable amount of time, mainly through the month of March. The the teams will be meeting going through that and collecting data to also support the, um, the self-assessment. And then um, in doing that in April and May, we'll move into looking at that data collection, looking at the results of the self-assessment, um, and looking at current school initiatives and whatnot and aligning those to move forward into draft action plans. And as I said, by the end of June, you should um, have finalized school action plans that will link to our school improvement plans and district improvement plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't, I don't know if anybody has Does any questions. Does anyone have any questions that. or comments? Okay. Okay. Um, one thing you should be aware of, um, Mr. Cardin mentioned it earlier, the OMS heater on the building. Yep. That is going to be a very large expense. It's going to be about 250000 um, just give you the money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what they had in mind. <laughs> So uh, I will be back to you in terms of how that will be financed. We have to do it. It's it's it's, it's essential that it be done. We've been, we've been we've jerry we've jerry rigged a, a fairly adequate but not long term adequate way to keep the music room um, heated and ventilated. So um, we the the ideal would be to be replace it during the the summer, and we have a six to eight week order time. So. I'll be working with um, with Ms. Mertz and the town to see how we're going to move forward on this. But you should know this is a big ticket item in front of us. Is there only Sorry. one? Sorry. Fall under the facilities. Yeah. Well, our facilities revolving account uh, annually. I think she means the um, the combined town school yeah. facilities department. Well, I they don't really have a big. We haven't given them money. Uh, it, no, the, for the repairs in the schools, they pretty much rely on our revolving account. So you should you understand oh, okay. this. We, our revolving account usually takes in, has a revenue of about 350000 a year, of which around 100000 is custodial overtime. So 250000 is what we use for repairs and painting in the summer. And, and so that is the entire amount that's there. Yeah, Mr. I, I thought that when we did this combination, and we may be in that first year or second year, the whole thing was going to the town, including our, that piece of our budget, and the town would be covering all these expenses going forward. That was the plan. It's, yeah. it's not That's quite on that plan right now. The the. But will we be getting there at some point? Well, we it's there, even if it's really a shell game. I mean, if we can if, give the full amount of money, it's I think of that facilities budget as facilities money for them to use in repair. I understand that, but, yeah, but, but the agreement, when we took that vote a year or so ago, was that we, we wouldn't have the duplicate town facility and school facility, but we, there'd be an overlap for a year or so, and but we would give up our part of the budget, right. they would take over the whole thing, and it was a good deal for us, because if that was in place 
for an incident like this. It's granted, it comes out of the tax assessment. It comes out of the town money, but it doesn't come out of our budget. And we don't have to go looking for yeah, it that in was an my emergency. That's Normally, my fear. this would be a capital expense. If we knew that we're going to need a new heater on Odyssey, and that would go into the, the capital rotation. That, that's how that would work. It's these big surprise repairs. Now, to the facility's credit, one of the things that they're working on, and they've actually completed one of our schools already, is looking at all of the um, all of the all of the parts and heating units and anything that would require any kind of maintenance, putting it into a database so that you can be proactive. That is happening. In fact, I'd like to have Ms. Bennett come some evening and yeah. give us yeah. a I understand that. So yeah. Part of the selling feature to, to us yeah. to give this up was that emergency expenditures would not be tap we wouldn't have to be looking for money. I'm not right. knocking you right now, Dr. Bordy. I'm just saying, <laughs> no, I, excuse me, I, I, I said <laughs> that wrong. But uh, right now we're looking for $200,000 that we weren't planning on expending. And even, this, even if all the money was in the town site, we would be in the same boat. I they mean, wouldn't be, they, my understanding when we voted it, they would not be coming to us. <laughs> they would be looking for it on the town side. That's well, we're all, okay. Let's put it this way: I, we're all looking for it well, right now. No, I, I think I think we, have we haven't order, implemented have the plan. Okay. I think uh, Mr. Cardin can talk to that. Yeah, yeah. So we we aren't there yet. We aren't doing it yet. I, I think the idea is, and it's not going to happen next year because they haven't talked to us right. about it. So maybe some, maybe 19. The idea is there would be a central budget. Mm -hmm. The revenue that we receive for building rentals would go into that central budget mm -hmm. along with other funds from other. So if there's a repair needed at the DPW building, some of our funds might go to that one year, and then the following year, if there's a repair needed on the school building, an emergency repair, some of the funds would come to that. So I think you're right. right. That right. is the goal. I thought that was our we're plan. Not, we're not well, there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. And put our, it's not clear that we're going to even move there. Anymore. When it was presented to us, uh, yes, it was they said it was a one-year overlap. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and then the, the second, second year, year it would start. And it was even things like heating costs and you know stuff like we, that was was part of, supposed to be part of this budget, but we have it has not been rolled out. For it. But if we have, I mean, Ruthie Bennett coming to us and talking to us about it maybe can clarify some of the plan for what the yep. future is. Well, and so I, that that is an agenda item I know that people want, and I'm going to pass it on to Mr. Thielman because <laughs> we won't be able to do it under my tenure. But um, but just keep a note of that. Okay. Yeah. Right Great. <laughs> Well, we will. Um, it's. I think we all have to look at this. It's not town and school side. We're, we really work together quite closely in trying to make these. It's just that we have this big expense. It came out of the blue. Maybe, and I'm not even sure that if even having a maintenance plan would have predicted the, the total no. failure of it. it you know, things happen. It happens in our own houses. How old is it? Hmm. At the so age of Otteson. So it's... When Audison was done, which was back in the um, in their 90s, yeah, yeah. when they were in bed. Okay, so ooh, 19. Yeah, I got one of those. 94-year-old, yeah. yeah. born in 94. Uh, is your point that we could have predicted it? <laughs> I think we could have started having some pretty good guesses. Yeah, I, I, I think. I think we're getting into a better um, planning process than we, we had. Getting, I mean, that's also <laughs> was supposed years ago. to be part of this, right? Yep. Is yeah. that yeah. they were going to start yes. owning? Yep knowing yep. the age and putting this in a 23 year old thing mm -hmm. we should know anything over 20 years it's yeah. that's it's going not, you know it's going to go the dream the, the the plan is there in place in fact one of the things that's going on right now is that the contractors on the stratton the thompson gibbs are putting everything on an spreadsheet so it's uploaded into this software we're using now so, now. so in about a year, maybe a little more, but that's sort of the, the time frame. We probably will have all the buildings, all of the mechanical systems with their the manufacturer, their the, the year they were installed, their serial number, all of that information into this database. Mm -hmm. And then you can start rolling out projections. So, I mean, it's, it's happening, it's just that this happen so I'll let you know how it's but I, I didn't want to be surprised down the road when you heard this number I understand that we have to figure this out and we will because it needs to be ordered it's not a, it's not a this can be deferred I think uh, Dr. Allison right. so I'm just I understand that she's working on the peers and stuff but I'm wondering 
if it doesn't make more sense to do to go to Audison, which is one of the large, I mean, it's the largest, oldest mm -hmm. school that we've got, and has other systems, I bet, that are going to be in need. So either hit that first or hit the really big ticket item, you know, just go around the district, hit the really big ticket items first and get them into the thing so we can say, okay, oh, this one's 19 years old, we better get that on capital list. Right now, think, things like that, rather than do a just building, you know, then come back and finish yeah, the whole the work. So it sounds like when we get Ms. Bennett in here, we will have a lot of questions and hopefully get some clarification yep. from her. Yeah. All right. Uh, someone else? No. Well, one last thing, and that is um, ath oh, a couple of searches. Things, actually, actually yes. Alika, you want yeah, to talk things. about the searches? Yes, please. And there's a few things, actually, that we still have. Yes. They're not on the list, but we've ta <laughs> talked mm -hmm. about it. Go, go on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have two searches going on right now, the OMS principal, mm -hmm. and um, interviews will be next week. We have a, a fairly large committee, uh, parent representative, teachers, um, administrators, uh, principal. So it's, it's a fairly um, representative group of people. And in that process, um, because of all, whenever we've done a principal search, after this initial, the interviews, we, we need to have three finals moving forward because our process after that is first of all an announcement of the, the candidates and they, they go through you know, obviously reference checks, but then they also meet with teachers, they meet with um, parents, and we don't wanna be in a position where we would have somebody drop out, um, take another position, because there are other searches going on right now, and um, have the last person standing type of thing. So it's important that we have strong candidates coming out. If we do not, after this first round, we will keep the we will keep it open, um, and we'll see where we are. So, so I know the the parent rep hasn't yet been chosen. Do you know when that happened? When the plan is? Um, Mr. Spiegel's been in, yeah. in, in, in contact think, with I the OPAC president. OPAC has requested that parents contact them by this Yeah, they sent out today. today the, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they talked to him last week about having, um, uh, choosing the parents. And what we, we, I had the, told him the date of uh, the, uh, the, the interviews and everything. And I think they're going to, so they have a couple days to get back to him. Right. And so I think by Monday we would know who the parents are. I mean, okay. it, they, but they know if they're going to do it, they know they have to be available mo next Wednesday. Okay, great. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Hainer. How many, can you tell us how many applications you got or approximate number? Um, uh, I can tell you we've got more than 10, more than 50. More than 50. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. But you have to understand that. But they're not, not all. No, no, I understand. There's a lot of people who, who apply that are not even certified for the role. Right. right. So. It takes a lot of guts. We got to start some. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then we have a CFO search. Um, we have a fairly large committee that is, again, very representative. Uh, obviously, people from here in the, the, the school district, but also our controller, director of facilities, director of IT, a representative from finance committee, um, our deputy town manager, so we have a very broad range of people that are gonna be part of this process. This one's a little different in that um, it's possible even to come out of this with one candidate, again, reference, checking, and then we would have another um, series of, uh, another interview after that in which um, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey is on the committee as well, so the school committee is on the search committee. We would have a, a, a smaller group doing another another um, interview. So it's because it doesn't, is public in terms of parent and teachers, it, it, um, it's not as crucial that we have more than one candidate coming out, but mm -hmm. hopefully we have more than one, we'll see. We're, we're, we're right now in a doodle to get this huge group together to, uh, to do some interviews. Uh, so I think there was a question about, I know um, Dr. Allison Ampey hasn't yet been involved in it because it hasn't gone that far. Um, what, um, what stage she comes in um, for, as a school committee rep in terms of looking at resumes and you know, how, how yeah. many, there's, there, I've had questions about that, so I just wanted to direct um, that to you. She's, you're gonna come in and look at the resumes that we have. Yeah, that, that's okay, the plan. So that, okay, so that, I, mm -hmm. I think we, some people want to clarification about the process. Yeah, great. Uh, Mr. Hayner. 
you and I had a uh, discussion about the public interviewing and stuff, and I'd like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Spiegel about the issue of uh, nervousness of people uh, declaring that they're looking for a job. He and I had a discussion about that. Uh, you, you, well, I mean, I think it depends. We got the, it, the public sector people. It depends on the individual. There are public sector. It's very common in thinking the public sector for people to look for jobs in other districts. It's not unusual. Um, we know that you know sometimes other districts have more. Uh, sometimes are public about it and have to declare. I mean, especially when they get to the finalist stage. Um, and it's understandable for some positions that someone who is working for one district might be interviewing in a finalist stage in another district and may not get that job and if that happens that's okay they come they stay in their current district it's that's not unusual other people may have different circumstances in their job where it's they might be more reticent to declare that they're uh, that they're looking but um, you know if if usually when we know when we're when we get to a finalist stage for a principal position or a high-level administrator position, we inform the candidates that we are going to make that public, that that part of the process. Will when be there's public. only one candidate, is it? Or no, when there would be three. When or, there are three, okay. Th yeah, okay. if there would be mm -hmm. multiple candidates, they could be mm -hmm. public um, in, in that case. But usually in the initial interview stage, <coughs> they might not be telling their um, superiors Sorry. that they're right. interviewing. Yeah. So. Because they're not in the running yet. Generally, yeah. if you're applying to be a superintendent, assistant superintendent, or principal, there's an expectation that at some stage you're going to have yeah. your name released. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the same with other positions. Yeah. It's just not. And um, that's just sort of the culture of how these work. So um, there'll be a, a strong vetting process, but, but you are the appointing authority for the CFO. And so the candidate that would come to you, you would have a chance. In, in fact, you, you have to in, mm -hmm. in public interview. And at that stage, that person is going to have to let, if in fact, it's a, they're coming from another district, let that district know. Mm -hmm. Also, um, can you talk uh, publicly about the uh, trip that you were invited to? That was, that's in our consent agenda. Um, yes, well, did you, you want to wait to consent agenda or pull it out? But I, I, uh, no, I, I think I at, if it, at one point we talked about you sort of mentioned it briefly in your superintendent's okay. remarks, and then we will. Well, I was uh, inv invited to attend a national uh, superintendent's conference, and um, it became a sort of out of the blue, uh, and for the reason of the innovations that the, we do in our district. So they had invited and will give, it, it's a free of charge to come to the, con, to the, to the uh, conference and they'll give me some stipend for the travel. So what you have, when, because this exceeds a $50 gift, <laughs> clearly, um, you have a disclosure statement that I filled out and you know, it's it's up to you whether you approve the approve it or not. And um, obviously, I'm not going to attend unless you want to approve this. But it's it's the toward the end of March. Uh, if I may, I was going to ask for this to be pulled out of the okay. uh, consent only for the purpose, because when I read the uh, regulation, it requires us to give written approval. And I, I, I don't think it should belong in okay. one, one uh, group. To oh, this okay. Should, could probably yeah, you need I to authorize her so, uh, but okay. I, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, until I, I had to go all the way through the two Great, I didn't do that. Thank you. found that one little piece that thank says you. it requires us to give written approval. So if we make that as a separate motion, yep. okay, that, great. that would, should suffice. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yes, Dr. Um, Allison, Abby. So I think this is really cool. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, and that's great that you're going I had one question about the finances I couldn't tell I know you say it's free of charge to attend for you but it, are they like waiving a fee and if so does that need to be listed on the um, disclosure form also well because I gave on the disclosure form what the expenses are that they said they are covering okay. and um, I can't answer that because they didn't give me what the conference cost would be. They're, 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 they're just saying it's okay. that amount of money each night. Yeah, I wasn't saying, I wasn't bringing this up to suggest not approving it. Just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to be sure the paperwork was correct. I gave you what I know. Okay. <laughs> That's all I could give you. And, 
that. Yeah, that's all. That's all I know in, in terms of that. Uh, but I've already had a request come in the other day of asking, you know, what what roundtables want to be at, and and they're all very much consistent with what we're doing in terms of personalized um, instruction and um, you know blended learning. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really very consistent with the kind of work that we're doing. And in fact, that may be the reason why, because as you know, we were invited, uh, identified by the, by the Consortium of Learn Launch and the Department of Education as being a leader in this area. Now, we think that we're, you know, just, we're not, we're beginning this work, mm -hmm. but relative to where other districts are, I think that we're much further along than we give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just say um, kudos to you, and that's a yeah. real um, comment on your leadership and, and on our yeah. district. So thank you. That's it. That's We've got really a great nice district thing. here. Yeah. I just want to give the athletics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some, talk about some kudos. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's happened tonight. The game is still on, but our boys' basketball are in the, the state tourney, and because of their record, which was outstanding, they were, they were the undisputed league champion. They were undefeated in the league mm -hmm. this year. Um, they have home home field advantage for tonight's game. Should they win, they'll have another home advantage. So they did very well. They're doing very well. Yes. Um, it's going on right now. It's going on yes, right now, right. Mm -hmm. right now as we speak. Um, the, the girls hockey team also made it to the tourney level and they, they are moving on. They won yesterday and their game is this coming Saturday for game number two and it's going to be at Saturday at five o'clock in Woburn. So they're doing excellently. Our boys hockey team also, this is the first time in decades that the boys hockey team made the Super 8, mm -hmm. which is a, for those in hockey, you know, you know how mm -hmm. prestigious that is. So they made the Super 8 and the first game for this tournament is Sunday at Songus Arena at four o'clock. Anybody forgets these times? It's on the athletic website, so you can just you can get it. So there are, our students are doing extraordinarily well this year Great. in athletics. Good, and that's that's my report. Great, thank you. Um, before we go into San Isandro, I want to um, also kudos to Karen Fitzgerald, who is sick. I know tonight, <laughs> and so thank you so much for being here. But if you feel you need to go home, we will understand <laughs> because will take the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> because I know, I, I know that you're that you're you're were sick yesterday and and, and I think still sick today. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, so um, consent agenda: all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests. In which event, the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant, approved warrant number 17129, total warrant amount of $571,599.37, dated uh, February 9th, 2017. Approval of minutes, approval of school committee regular meeting Thursday, February 14th and February 16th, 2017. Approval of Arlington High School Italy trip presented. Oh, right, do we, that's, that's, that's one presented tonight, and we can do that. We can keep that in the sense then, okay. Um, well, we already approved it. Right, because we didn't have it last, I, I remember there was a problem last time. <clears throat> approval of Model United Nations, March 10th, 2017, New York City, and that's a previous trip. Um, approval of travel expenses for the superintendent. Um, and I know Mr. Hainer wanted to pull the, the, the one on the superintendent the vote that's separate. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move in that separately. So I wasn't here for the two the, the minutes. Okay, so yes, and, yeah. and Mr. Thielman. Mm -hmm. Although we have talked about that you could mm -hmm. vote on like it. I could still vote on it. Okay, yeah, anyway, don't pull. so that, that's come up before. All right. The 16th on in there. And the 16th isn't in there. <laughs> so we can Yeah, okay, so it's, pro it's only right. I forgot if you had mentioned mm -hmm. that. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, so don't pull it. Don't pull, pull the others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all in favor of the other ones? Aye. Say aye. 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 I uh, opposed. No? Okay, I didn't hear. <coughs> okay, so that's unanimous. Um, so the approval of travel expenses for the superintendent. For Move the to approve. Thank you, Mr. Second. Dr. Alsanabe, seconded by Mr. Thielman. All in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, just a question: We have to sign this so that mm -hmm. no, no, not sign it. it, it, it. No, the, yeah, uh, the chair has to it. sign it, yeah. and that's it. Okay, great, mm -hmm. excellent. Okay, so um, policy. There's none. Uh, subcommittee liaison reports. Uh, Budget, I assume, has been exhausted, but is there? Well, <laughs> so, 
budget's also going to do outreach sessions. Oh, great. Oh, um, yes. And Excellent. we've had um, Ms. Fitzgerald sent an email announcement of all of our mm -hmm. things that are online right now. Next week, we have one on the 8th at Stratton. On the 10th, we're at Audison in the morning. Um, in April, we'll be at Thompson on the 12th. Mm -hmm. And there may be some other ones coming. We still have schools inquiring. Great. And I know you reported last time that the um, presentation that you gave was very well received, and that the public really that and this by Mr. Slickman. Thank you. And that, uh, that and I heard that that people really appreciated. It's a really valuable addition that the budget subcommittee is doing. Um, I think it's really yep. it's really mm -hmm. well received by the public. I had fun. They were engaged. It was yeah. a good time. Yeah. Mr. Hainer had also done one for us at Dallin. Great. Way before we oh, even yes. started listing. Yes. Yes, so. I remember that. Yes. Before we had a budget. <laughs> uh, community relations, uh, Ms. Starks. Um, all right, so we had a meeting on Monday. Um, we talked a lot about um, the reimagining education forum that's going to happen on March 9th. Um, that's next Thursday. Uh, that will be here, right? Is it here? No, it's Town Hall. No, it's Town Hall. Hall. Town Hall, 7. Yeah. 645. 645. Wow, all right. Yes. <laughs> Next Thursday, Town Hall, 645. Um, and we just talked kind of a, about a lot of logistics about that. Um, we spoke about uh, how ways that the Vision 2020 Education Group and we can work more closely. Um, and there were a bunch of ideas um, thrown around on that, nothing definitive. We'll keep <coughs> talking with them. Um, then we also talked about uh, Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, three resumes uh, for people who were interested in being on the committee. Um, and then so we had some discussion about like kind of how we go about choosing and kind of, you know, what is the purpose of us having a choice? And so we did some of that uh, discussion. Um, and uh, we're going to follow up with some more um, interviews with those people and talking to those people and figuring that out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Monday night, the selectmen approved, I don't know whether you'd call it a subdivision or a pride commission. Yes, yes. we and, also talked about that. Okay. And, and so. we agreed that we were amenable to taking part on that okay. um, and that we would like to also be part of making an appointment to that right. okay. uh, commission as well. Right, so we're actually going to talk about that next time. We're going to talk about uh, three um, uh, warrant articles that are that are relevant, and, we're, and that's one of them. Uh, but. Uh, but we did agree that we were okay and happy to make an appointment. Yeah. Um, and then we also talked a little bit about buffer zones. We know that they were brought up when we were going through a lot of our growing pains as to whether that could help us mm -hmm. with kind of some of what we're doing. Um, we basically realized that at this point, there's nothing we would probably do that would happen next year anyway. Um, so that we are gonna um, kind of, there were a couple of, we're going to go off and kind of do some more thinking, um, uh, but uh, I think that timing-wise, we're looking at um, probably taking that back up in the fall um, and then kind of working through it in the fall and making some recommendations for the following year. So there would be no um, no action on that at this time. Yeah. Dr. Oh. Are you talking about getting rid of the buffer zones? No, or uh, mostly <laughs> we were talking <laughs> about um, kind of growing the buffer zones so that them they had them. there yeah. was a little bit more okay. uh, wiggle room um, and space and just you know kind of making sure that we look at o over all the ground rules and make sure that we're still okay with all of those and that those are all still working and you know kind of a review of how it's going and and all of that so um, but at this point like I said we're not certainly not going to make any changes for next year which I think is important for people to understand um, and that what we'll do is we'll start looking at it in the fall um, again and with more data so we kind of mm -hmm. sent everybody off to kind of gather some data um, and then come back and start talking about it next fall in hopes that if there is any necessary changes made it would be for whatever the next school year is <laughs> and I but that the, the the point the the point would be to try to make <clears throat> any recommendations of any changes kind of january for the following september mm -hmm. so that everybody has enough time to to work through there, there was actually even some discussion that we could delay even an additional year for implementation right. if we felt that was necessary but we are i mean i think at now we're talking about tweaks not radical yeah overhaul. it's nothing yeah. I don't think we're looking at anything radical you know it'd be more like you know can we make it 
you know, for the schools that are really feeling the effect, um, which are, we're building at Thompson and Hardy, so it's not going to be there, but places like Bishop, you know, they need a little bit more sp to be able to push off to some of the other schools and kind of looking at all of that. And we just decided we needed more data and we needed to kind of think about some of those things. And we're actually looking at how some other districts have also um, done these and some of the rules and regulations they have just to kind of compare them and see how they're doing and how it's all going. So kind of just kind of an update almost you can call it. If you're gathering that, it'd be great to see how they do their reporting out also yes. of effectiveness and stuff. Yeah. To the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Any other questions on that? Uh, Mr. Hainer, I think. I, I was question. just going to say, uh, you might consider annexing a piece of Medford and Lexington. Yeah. <laughs> spread out room. Yeah, no, because they, should because they don't have a lot of kids in their school systems. No, no. <laughs> no land. Right. Land. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not people. <laughs> okay. Um, I just also want to remind everybody that we have, again, this weekend is uh, the community chat. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, Mr. Hayner and Mr. Carden. Car Mr. Carden are going to be there this Saturday. Um, and I went, that's it. That's all I have for do, that. Do we have notes? Did we? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember. Not yet. I we haven't have notes seen, from the previous yeah. one. I owe you notes. Okay, okay. excellent. That's what yeah, I thought. We, we did our I notes. Your notes. I know. I know. We're good. You did such an amazing notes. job that everyone is cowed, I think, it's a, it's a, by how. <laughs> how bar. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a high bar, and yeah. so I think I, that's what I suspect is happening. All right. <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, district accountability curriculum instruction and assessment. No report. We, oh, do have, yeah, we yeah. have actually this we is we have the item on the uh, yeah this is the read. discussion so um, we defer the discussion in, because Mr. Thielman was not here last time well okay but I mean no <clears throat> it made sense um, so this is mm. a sort of second read um, I actually have we, a yes. suggested change oh, I, I? but do other people have changes to this? Well, there's a question were there, uh, Mr. Schlickman. Go Were ahead. there amendments sent to you? Would did anyone send any? Nobody sent an amendment. I didn't. I just came up oh, with it. So today. now you just, just came, came up with it now. With it now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. No, there was a dead. There was a <laughs> firm deadline for amendments. Well, there was to Mr. Which, Schlickman, which was a week from the time that we requested yeah. them at the last oh, meeting. I mentioned that okay. we had no. It is a vote. And I so declare it. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, can I? Can <laughs> I just? Until next month. Right, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm happy. Um, no, no. Go ahead. Let me just tell you what my thinking is. Um, and uh, so the student learning goal, which is the written refined vision and program for Arlington High School, ready for submission to Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, now that I think we understand, maybe Dr. Roy can talk about this, more how slow the timing is right now of um, what's happening so that, so that right now we have a couple, few months that we're just coming up with the owner's project manual, the owner's project um, manager. And we don't really get into the details of the vision of the Arlington High School. So it felt like the wrong, and I think we did, I think, I think a few months ago we thought the spring we'd be doing this kind of work and, and now our understanding is that it won't happen until the fall. So it feels premature. And what I wanted to replace it with is something, and I'm sorry I didn't get you that earlier, is something about um, the safe supportive schools, social yeah, emotional. Yeah, or the social emotional. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I do have some language if you want to consider it, if you think it's in um, order. I think it's so way late over the transom well, and pounced upon us. If we want to delay it another two weeks to consider it, yeah. I, I yeah, wouldn't mind. I, think that's I would, I would I vote think. it tonight. Okay, would, that, that's fine. Um, so let me tell you my suggested language, but I will send it to you. Um, report in the plan committee to assess the district's strengths and challenges in creating safe and supportive school environments for all students and present a preliminary plan as to how the Arlington Public School System um, okay. plans to roll out the recommendations of this planning right. committee. Something, something like is that. There a, is there a, so there's a committee meeting right now, so be based on a report of the committee? Uh, yeah. there, there, the understanding we got from uh, Ms. Elmer tonight was that it was going to be in J July. That we get a, an idea of what the, the recommendation. Plans. Yeah, yeah, the plans. They, will, they should be completed by June. By, yeah. by June. By June. Right. right. They will be district level. They'll be school action plans, right? They're school action They're plans. They're all tied to the district so, improvement plan. Okay. Right. Yes. So don't forget that we're doing this for FY17. Yes. The yes. fiscal year that ends on June 30th. Yep. Okay. But it can also go forward too. You're right. Well, will, will there you be at a point where you can have a report by June 30th? 
a report in the sense that the know, we will I mean, have executed mm -hmm. the action planning phase that mm -hmm. we outlined for this year. So the meeting, the self-assessment, the okay. I believe yeah. the um, goal, creation of teams, um, the meeting, the self-assessment, and then the drawing cool. of action plans that should be completed by June 30th. Yeah. Okay, so we That's can good. have a report. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and then, so just the other thing is that Dr. Bur just so I mean, I think if you want to wait, we can wait, but keep in mind that in March we're supposed to have a report on this <laughs> yes and so that's we sort of got the we're late have a we're sort of in the middle of March yeah so yes well I, I'm okay so I'm, I'm okay not no no no, no. I, I mean I think too I long th and that's fine no, no. but I do think we want to consider that the the goal mm -hmm. as written isn't isn't practical isn't right. practical so right. it's, it's so, so it yes, needs to be amended really that's right. Learning right. at the same time I think it's fine to wait two not weeks really till April I mean till uh, March 16th yeah but uh it, it seems to me like we still want to say to the superintendent, there's got to be some schedule. So the meeting on the March right. 30th, is that it? Is that where we're going to have a presentation yes. on these? Uh, I think we're going to have two presentations. Well, uh, are you talking about the M MSBA? No. No, no the no, FY17. The, the, um, like the goals. So if that's, these what are, we're, that's what we're doing. Just your goals and superintendent the goals as well. We, we have been having reports all along. I mean, I, I could probably could go through all the goals and maybe we can give you the dates that they, this happened. But by the end of March, you will have heard of a preliminary report on all of the so that would goals. be good to have sort of some right. document so, so right that. so we uh, <clears throat> right so it's sort of a half time report I don't think some of these things we what we haven't yet seen so then the question is just looking through this and figuring out what actually the, you have uh, on just well, everything but the goal one is really the ones that we haven't and, and of course the PD too we'll get that for you but yes, the Adriana. but the intent was that on a specific date in the spring you'll pull them together and, and do a presentation on the on the on, on the superintendent goals. On the superintendent goals. Well, specifically, not just did, 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 goals did we, and that's what yeah. this is right here. Can, can I make a comment on that goal? I, yeah. I, I actually appreciate the, the potential change. We did find out this is going to go slower right. than we thought it was going to go. What we have submitted, and you actually have a copy of it, there is a preliminary document along these lines. Which is, it's looking at the existing programs at the high school, but in almost every single department, they were looking to the future. So that is in that document. And what they will be doing in the next phase of this is building on that. Mm -hmm. So you have the preliminary, but it isn't exactly what I had in mind. I had in mind the, fees, the, the report that goes as part of the feasibility study, but that now is not going to go to the MSBA until the fall sometime. It's been an interesting discussion on the MASC list about, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, who does their um, superintendent evaluations oh, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, fall. I saw, I saw your yeah, response, yeah. Um, but there have been a bunch of them, and that was very interesting about, like, who does it in the fall, who does it in the spring. Mr. Gilbert saying that nobody does it in the fall. Yeah, yeah nobody so does like, it in the fall. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Here we go. <laughs> I know. He knows. He knows we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time he said it, I say, "Excuse me, Arlington does." Yeah. yeah. Um, so, do we want to delay this vote? Then is that? I mean, I'm. If so, we're going to make an amendment to it, we should. Yeah. So I think maybe you and Dr. Bodie should talk. Yeah. If you guys okay. have yep. a different way to modify this, and then, but then at then the same share. time, you know, we need to have in March. That's what the policy says. Policy, mm. policy yep. says there needs to be an, an interim report. Yep. So I think the interim report could simply be you receive reports on the following on these dates, and mm -hmm. here's kind of a quick one-page right. bullet yeah. summary, a memo mm -hmm. of what we're right. at. And there's definitely exactly. some things that we haven't received yet, so we and that's well, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We know we're going to get them. Yeah. That's yeah. can't. Couldn't we yeah. pass all but the student learning goal? We fine. Could. And that way, at least she knows what it is, and mm -hmm. yep. you know it's it's done. Sure. Okay. Okay, so is that a, do we uh, need a motion? Uh, yeah. Move, yeah. move to. So yeah, Mr. Sugman has a. I mean, the question is, is that, well, let, let's say that we did this at a meeting or two ago, or we did this in December. Here we are in March with something yeah. that we wouldn't be, be would, we wouldn't be amending it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying that uh, I'm, if if we had this as a solid document and it came out to this point of the year mm -hmm. turning out to be well the state's slowing it down so maybe right. it's not as good a goal 
we'd, we'd, we'd be living with it. We That's wouldn't true. be making a substitution mm -hmm. on March uh, 2nd. So yep. I don't know that I'm really inclined to making an amendment to this because we hashed this out mm -hmm. at retreat. This has been out there for a month. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd rather pass it the way it is and live with the ambiguity of the goal that may not okay. be as in, in as good a shape as it could be. Ms. Tucks. Um, I think that the amended goal is a much better student learning goal. I actually think that this student learning goal mm -hmm. is not a student learning goal. Right, right. It's a building goal. Right. It right. has nothing to do with student learning. Right. So I really like your amended student mm -hmm. learning goal much better. Okay. Mr. Hainer. I agree wholeheartedly with what Ms. Stark said. I think the issue that is behind this is that we have all become very lax in getting things yeah, done yeah, on time when we set yeah. dates, <laughs> especially, and I'm going to, for Ms. Fitzgerald, no shot on you, Mr. Garden, but that I would have loved to have seen all your documents yeah, earlier today. And no, right. no, no, I understand, but it's not just us. It, we give, by example, administration and stuff slowly gets slack. We have to be reminded to get things in on time, all of us. You, the administration's good today, <laughs> tonight. So, what are we <clears throat> voting on then? I'm. Well, I'm going to second a motion. Motion I to vote. Motion to approve. Motion to approve this as as is. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion on that motion? Yes, Ms. Dr. Alsampi. I would like to make a motion to amend the student learning goal with what um, Dr. Seuss has. Okay, so how does that? Uh, you vote the motion, well, then the amendment. No, you, you can discuss it first, no. then the motion. What? You have to so vote. you're voting. You're making a motion to, to amend. amend. I'm voting. I'm making a motion to amend the student learning goal to substitute the written language here okay. with what you talked about. And I understand that. That's so, I'll second a report on the committee that Dr. Elmer talked about earlier today. Right, safe and supportive schools. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I second it. Um, so how do we? <laughs> What? I'm, yeah. <laughs> Help me out, Mr. Harden. A dueling amendment, not yeah. an amendment of a motion. Mm -hmm. you, have to vote, you have to vote Paul's motion down first. Okay. What? If, if, that's, if that's what we want. It's a to replacement. Do. Okay. No, it's I it's, it was it's amend amending the language no, that's existing. Okay, so let's take up. Um, uh, Lenny, would you. He made a motion to approve the policy. Yeah. Well, she's making a motion she to change. She can make a motion to amend it. She, yeah. I, I thought I, it was a motion, motion to amend it. A piece of that document. I'm saying I move to approve the document. She's moving to amend the document. She's mo moving to yeah, amend. I, I think so that, first I mean, that's sort of what we do in town meeting, right? Similar, yes. Yes. similar that, that we amend the motion. We don't amend. Right. So we're yes. amending the motion, which is that we're not going to approve this document as is. We are going to change. We're the approving all but yes. the. I think I think that I th I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So let's vote on the amendment right now. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, any abstentions? Okay. So but I do want to say Paul made a very good point. It's often he did. time you I'm make goals, sure. you set goals, then you rarely report and I, say, well, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. the goal. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely agree. Life changed. At some no. point, we have to just put our foot yeah. down. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And next year, we will. <laughs> now, but yeah, absolutely. Vote the uh, motion. Dr. Bode, uh, uh, Dr. Bode wanted to comment first. Just to put it in perspective, the, yes. these, both these goals are part of the district goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And I feel responsible, as does my whole team, of accomplishing what we set out to do. Now we may not be, we may not completely accomplish everything, but certainly it is our intent always to do this. We lay this out for the year. So it's sort of an artificial thing to sort of say, well, I'm gonna call that the learning goal, I'm gonna call that the, because we're doing them all. Yep, okay. I know. Yep. Vote the motion. Okay, all in favor of the motion as amended, please aye. say aye. 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 aye, all opposed? Okay. You know, one thing I want to say, because I think it's appropriate, is policies and procedures. Oh, that's unanimous. That's, no, that, that was that, a 7-0. That, 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 that was unanimous. That was unanimous. So, first and second. Oh. Uh, Paul, I seconded the main motion. Okay. Yeah. And I seconded KSC's amendment. So, you know, we, there is this back and forth in the MASC list, and we did say that if the policy, if we were concerned about the timeline, the policies and procedures subcommittee would go yes. back and take a look at this. Right. So I mentioned that tonight. Yeah, okay. So actually, so, so you know, so it's not, yeah. it's not like it's dead. You know, it's this right. is the only way exactly. to do it. Yeah. 
we have come to this agreement in this yeah. in our committee, but there may right. be a better way to do it, and that's your committee's responsibility right. exactly. to think about it. So actually, I want to suggest something. So I know that in the preamble of this document, it talks about how the policy and procedures subcommittee is going to make some changes, and I know that was our discussion. Recommended, recommended, recommended. policy. <clears throat> I know that was our discussion in January. I think it might make sense for Mr. Steele and Mr. Hainer to Remind talk to each other talk to each other and just just to, well, to, to clarify what changes we talked talk. about yeah. in yeah. January Yes, because Thank I you. think um, there was it's been so long that things yes. have been forgotten. So um, very much. So. Yes, okay <laughs> great. great Okay, so what are we up to now? So um, So we voted yes. that mm -hmm. as amended. Yes, so, I'm sorry. Seven that was seven zero seven zero. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, facilities, Mr. Thielman. There's really, I mean, well, the, the uh, School Enrollment Task Force met and we endorsed the plan for the Hardy School, which is really going to be presented by town meeting, uh, to town meeting by the Capital Planning Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it, I mean, hopefully it will pass. And yeah, it's on the special. Yeah, it's, oh, it's on the special town meeting. Right. Uh, and so, I, you know, hopefully it'll pass. Can I, can I ask a question? So, is the. Um, so dealing with the cafeteria issue going to be well, um, covered under those funds? So what we did, no. Yes, yeah, so what we said was that it was going to be addressed during the design phase. Yeah. I mean, the, the committee talked about it, the school room task force talked about it at length. The, um, I mean, Adams, Chapter Lane summed it up well on that. The committee could give an opinion now on where the hall, whether the hallway should be cut off or not, but at the end of the day, it would be resolved in the design phase right. in which the architects and the school administration right. We think would the be money dialed. is sufficient. Well, yes, the money is sufficient, okay, the money's sufficient to do any option. Okay, got it, I, okay. I, Mr. Hainer. Yeah. Thank you. I, that's exactly how I remember it at enrollment, yeah. but at Permanent Town Building Committee, Mr. Chaplain said no. I, I the only thing going yeah. forward from that would be the possibility of using additional rooms and not touch the cafeteria. Being 71 years old, I figured I heard it wrong. I defer to my young colleague here. Well, he heard you. it. I heard it the same he way. Heard he heard it wrong then. No, but I, well, I think I've heard yeah. different things at and different would, times, so that's it, why I'm, well, I'm curious no, no, about the. No, 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 what I'm saying is, is if, it, if the intent, what I understood the intent of the enrollment committee, we spent a lot of time that night discussing the three options and stuff, and I thought we landed on well, a recommend. None of them. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, a, well, a recommendation, but still to be considered. All he heard was repurposing, in other words, not doing any renovation, repurposing one of the other rooms. Right. And so well, okay. I would ask Dr. Bodie to talk to him and make sure that Heidi gets the best thing going forward before we go to town meeting. That's the only thing. Well, well I mean, know it before. you can't. You're going to get yeah, the money allocated. Yeah, we'll get the money. You're going to get the money allocated, and then I thought, so it's not going to be determined in, in the design well, phase? It's it not will be determined reason. in the design okay, phase. Okay, so the superintendent. Okay, okay. okay. It's, uh, it's Adam that's having a problem remembering, okay. not okay. us. Okay, well, okay. he's not so here to defend himself. So Four of us. <laughs> in, in <laughs> yeah, if he's not in the room, throw him under the bus. Mr. Chaplin, I think what he also heard was was the building principal talking about other options. Yes. Yeah. That, that might actually work better right. than the, the demolition right. suggestion. She had concerns that were about made. the demolition of that hallway. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. She wanted to change to keep the, the hallway. flow of yeah, the building. Absolutely. Right. And then she, right. there right. were different Adequate. options for the elimination of the yeah. stage. Right. right. So at the end of the day, if we wanted to make the cafeteria we bigger, the, 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 the yeah. design people and the educators yeah. have to try to figure right. out a solution. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cardin. I guess the key is we had the second review of the, the costs. Are those added costs? Included in the plan. The, yes. The demolition yes. of the hallway. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. There's enough money in the. There's enough money the, to do these. Uh, any of these uh, no, options. No. Is what the third one said. wasn't. The third one was uh, was the massive one of taking out the stairwell and stuff like that. That was like still 200. only a hundred thousand. It wasn't okay. much. All right. So if, if, if we're if that's still wrong, but we're not going to yeah. from the. Yeah. 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 I think that the, there was a peer review, and they feel that the money that is allocated is sufficient. To cover. And for what? Because the cafeteria costs are not going to be. Not big. They're not huge. Okay. okay. And she's not in favor of the eliminating that hallway, and that or would be the a, stairs, which yep. was right. the expensive part of yeah. the really yeah. expensive option. I mean, because so. of the because of the the um, the, the, dine, the flow of traffic in the building. I have to say, having you know my kids haven't gone to that school, yes, I be, totally get that. Yeah. So I mean, you of anyone who would know, I mean, it's like you know, <laughs> totally, totally get that. That is a terrible, terrible. Yeah. yeah. So you know. Okay. But, yeah. Um, Gibbs committee. Ms. Starks. Gibbs committee met today as Ms. Yes. Um, Dr. Bodie. Bodie, Dr. Bodie talked about. Um, we mostly talked about 
color schemes and oh. floor tiles and I don't know. It was interesting. Cool. <laughs> well, I don't enough. think we made any decisions. We kind of sent them back with some further thoughts, but. Um, well, I think we did. I think we, we didn't make specific, we gave them guidance. That's what they were looking for today. And there was some interesting thoughts brought up about, you know, how, how busy it should be in terms of sensory overload for some students. There was a lot of good discussion and points made about that. Yep. So it was, very, it was a very thoughtful discussion. You know, while we're on the top, I ran into a, a retired principal from um, Wayland who uh, it volunteers in Thompson, and she just said, whoever designed the Thompson School made the most beautiful school she's ever seen for elementary school. So you were on that committee, it was you and, mm -hmm. you know, so I would say the experts. You? The, the, I was, I didn't go to the <laughs> It was on yeah. too. Yeah, but I didn't go to the design of picking up the colors and all that stuff. No, it's a, it's a beautiful school. But whoever, but so, the, mm -hmm. the, that's a good thing. Right, and yeah. the, the problem, but, but the I think that result. the important thing to understand about Gibbs, <clears throat> Thompson was a brand new school. Yeah. We knocked it down, started over, yeah. built a sunny, wonderful, roundy, mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. you know, very mm -hmm. modern yeah. building. Gibbs is a really old, dark, square, that we're trying to fix. And so that's what the architect was trying to point out is like, we're gonna need to bring in the outside by adding color mm -hmm. because we're not gonna mm -hmm. have the windows. We're not, mm -hmm. you know, we can't, we're not building new. So um, we have to do a little bit more with color and mm -hmm. ideas to really kind of give mm -hmm. it that. And they're trying, I mean, some of their ideas for bringing light in and that kind of thing are really Well, I'm saying cool. the last yeah. color committee we had did a really good job. And yeah. So we, we have a track yeah. record this time of good color. Good committee. colors, good <laughs> yeah. Track committee? Track record? Track record of good color committees, yeah. One school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, legal services review, is okay. there any movement uh, there? I, I plan on talking with Mr. Cardin to see where we are and if we have any further uh, recommendations to the committee going forward. Uh, warrant committee. Signed the bills. So, excuse me, I signed the payroll. Uh, liaison reports. Yes, Mr. Permanent Sound Building Committee. Uh, we're on each one of the buildings, they understood. They're not letting me even ask the question. They all first all start off with saying we're on schedule. So. Good. Um, others? Dr. Alessandri. AF um, is having its trivia be mm -hmm. in a few weeks March and they're looking for teams we are actually one of the few teams that are already listed we are we don't have a name yet yeah, yeah. who, are, who, who are, is it who are you we need so we need a name and we need costumes it's uh, mr it? schlickman um mr thielman and myself and i think we had tasked mr schlickman with coming to name because you're so good at that i have i have not come <laughs> up with a good name yet but we also need costumes to do i can it think too. about costumes i that's i'm i, I can if do that but made, i'm not good at good the names costume, I let me think Oh, I have to do that first? Oh, I think they have to coordinate because the name key yeah, yeah, has yeah, to okay. align to the okay, costume. Let me, let me think yeah. about that. Maybe we can ask the color committee for some guidance. <laughs> I think, however, that we're running into a problem here. If this qualifies for executive session because there's a competition involved for the costume that if we start discussing costumes and names, we might be... The judge might, yeah, yeah. No, right. no, no, it's not the right. judge. It is the fact that other teams might hear this public oh, right, yeah. public right now. And yeah. that negotiating <laughs> this out in public might be detrimental I, yeah. to the best interest Fair of the enough. committee. No, I, I, I actually feel like open meeting law doesn't quite apply to choosing the name of the costume for the trivia bee because it's not a something before <laughs> the school committee. Yeah, I, I, and I I'm think we can coordinate. We, that is my opinion, but we can social, ask uh, our thing. lawyer. Yes, this is uh, a social Figure thing. it out. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, uh, so we, we, okay. uh, we, we can we right, can. So we're all looking forward to it. It's always a lot of fun. Okay, yes. so to our, our wide viewing audience, yes. they're looking for more teams. Yes. They would love more teams. Go to the AEF website um, and sign up. Mm -hmm. And you could it could be your soccer club, your a group from school, group from your alumni from college, anything. Great. And I understand there are going to be fifth graders there this year. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, fifth grade teams. Oh, doing different. Oh, the, first, real the first round, then. the first swarm will be fifth graders. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. Now, we did win the costume contest last year. We did, yeah. without any coordination. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. um, okay, so um, other liaison reports. Uh, announcements. I have a couple. Uh, this Saturday on the 11th, Beats for Eats is going to be having their fundraiser. And uh, this is for to raise money for Arlington Eats, which is a program that provides uh, food to 
uh, families in need um, over the school breaks and, and weekends and, and vacations. You know, so, so if a, a student is not on free and reduced lunch, before this program was in place, there was no option for school vacation and, and, um, uh, and weekends. And so this is a fabulous addition to our town, really um, you know, a, a good example of how caring our community is. And they're doing their fundraising, they raise tons of money, um, and it's on Saturday the 11th, it's in Town Hall starting at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And the other announcement I wanna make is uh, that on Thursday, we talked about this a little bit, um, the uh, ninth, we are having uh, at Town Hall uh, an Imagining Education Forum. And so that's going to be a forum, uh, it's gonna be really exciting to talk about all the really cool, innovative stuff that the Arlington Public Schools have been do has been doing. Um, and so uh, Dr. Chesson um, <coughs> is getting, has, has organized a bunch of teachers um, to make presentations. I think there's something like 20 presentations now, or? More. More, 20 for more. <laughs> um, and uh, the format will be that we are, uh, it's going to be three presentations. So unfortunately, even though there's, there's so many amazing things, each parent will only be able to go to three presentations. Um, and, but we hope to have the materials from the other presentations available online, mm -hmm. and we're gonna try this thing where um, the presenters are going to have a, um, a recorder near them where they, hopefully that can get captured on video and auditory so that hopefully we can make that, if it works. Mm -hmm. It's new, we might have technical problems, but if it works, we can make those presentations available to mm -hmm. people online as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gonna be a really exciting evening. evening. I encourage you to come do, um, the 9th. It starts at 6.45 and it goes until eight. Yeah, Dr. Allison, have you? I had one thing, it's not a, a announcement so much, but I'm going to go to the um, MASC's presentation on budgeting oh, on great. Saturday. Um, if anyone else is going, we could carpool. If not, I'll report back at our next meeting. Great. Where is great. it? Framingham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay, uh, future agenda Ms. items. Mark and comment. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Starks. Um, so I was intrigued um, on the MASC list um, that, uh, I can't remember who it was, was it Amherst Pelham Regional mm -hmm. oh, yes. Public Schools mm -hmm. um, has come up with um, rights of undocumented students and protocols for ICE access mm -hmm. to schools. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I really like what they put together. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. like that they have laid out some mm -hmm. protocol mm -hmm. for the fact that um, how, if they were mm -hmm. ever requested in, how that would work, how they would work with the superintendent, how that would all go down. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanna um, recommend that maybe our policy people think about that as well because I really, okay. I thought that that was interesting. interesting. So, um, sent it to everybody. Mm. Yeah, so, so do you want um, the policy to, to bring forth to us in a couple of weeks a suggestion, or do we want to just talk about whether that's something we want to do? Well, I guess I, I would I refer it to yeah. policy, policy and have mm. them look at it mm -hmm. and then have them think if they think that we should have such a policy, okay. maybe we could. Great, we'll talk put it on the it. agenda to talk about okay. nevertheless, but I, I have no problem with that. But I, I'm assuming I'm still trying to get hold of Mr. Gilbert to come to talk to. The, the subcommittee for the procedure. But since this was one of their initiatives, I'm assuming in updating our book that it will be. Well, I think this is more, this is more time critical. No, this is more time critical than that. This is, yeah, this is, this is really time critical. Fine. Yeah, it's gotta be in the next few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Can, Dr. Al Sampi. Can we bounce things to legal um, without going through the whole committee? I mean, as, as a member of policy? Because that's, I just want to be sure if we're doing something like this that, that it passes legal muster. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We've done it in the past. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. There was some discussion from Mike Gilbert about this motion on the, right? So there was on some. On the list. On the oh, list. She got so. a lot of eggs thrown at him for yes. what he said. Oh, I didn't read that part. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of people were like, um, no, none of those actually directly discuss any of the things that our Amherst Pelham did. And I see. None of those give anybody the rights that they should have. I, no, I don't think we need to go to outside counsel for this because Doug Hyam has been. Doug, Doug, is, that's, Doug can help that's us. That's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So, um, so it'll be on the agenda in a couple of weeks, and potentially with a resolution to vote on. And if not, we'll have a discussion. 
So yeah. that sounds good. Well, okay. I'll, I'll make that a resolution that they did. What? It's a policy or a resolution? Uh, they did a resolution. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we want policy to take a look at it. Yes. But, okay. But, but the, this resolution stated a policy of the district. Right. Right. So that it is. It is a policy change. It, it is policy, even if we're not putting it in the manual. We're, right. we're giving direction to the administration. Right. 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 Good. Yes, Mr. Hainer. You mentioned earlier uh, we'll have a night to discuss warrant articles. Uh, yes. I just want to just clarify or verify with you that Article 19 is one of those. Yes. Um, Thank you. Yes. So this was a um, request by Mr. Schlickman, um, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there are article. We're going to discuss three warrant articles that was request put on the agenda. Yeah. Article 19 was one of them. One of them. The and then the other one was uh, the, appo uh, the the appointment of for the the appointment pride. for the pride committee yep. and the um, uh, and, and the one on um, the, the the big one over, uh, on the. Uh, uh, sanctuary town. Yes. Because, okay. Right. So uh, there's a you know people are talking about fiscal impact to schools yep. as being a reason to support or oppose it. And right. we, as soon as that happens, we're brought into it. And I think right. we should discuss it and have right. a say. So that's going to be the agenda. Um, any other additional agenda item requests? Mr. Rayner? I uh, asked you for one. We postponed it from tonight to the yes. future. Yes. Yes. So. And we're going to add that to right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I think we're looking to adjourn um, and go into executive session. Oh, is that right? We don't adjourn. We don't adjourn because we're going to say session. So we're looking to go into executive session. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with the union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with the union and or non-union, in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. To so connect strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, in which if held in an open meeting, may have a detrimental effect. Collective bargaining may also be conducted. To discuss safety and security. To discuss open meeting law violation complaint. Negotiations update. AEA MOA agreement for kindergarten teachers 2017 uh, to 2018. Vote to approve the following executive session minutes, January 26, 2017. Um, and I think yes, we're coming back out for a vote. We are yes. not. We, we actually decided that we we'll can defer that. No, we'll do it next time. Okay. Yeah, we Fine. can defer that um, till, till later. Fine. Okay, so um, roll call to go into executive session. No? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> Thought I got it right. Mr. Yes. 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 Oh, okay, great. That's the first time.